All right, Anthony on Air Podcast, back with you here for another episode. So much happening in the world. We got you covered, including day 16 testimony from Amber Heard. Crazy stuff there. Uh, Ghislaine Maxwell gets transferred. We'll obviously tell you why that's pretty important. Uh, Sports Illustrated swimsuit controversy happening right now. Controversy. Ca- can you believe it? Cara Delavine, Frank. Do you know who that is? I do. Oh, I didn't know who that was until she annoyed the crap out of Megan Thee Stallion at the Billboard Music Awards last night. You don't know who, who she is? No, no clue. Okay, we'll go and over And again, the- I can't get a microphone to work, so there's not much hope for me these days. You're going old school on that microphone. Arby's manager from hell, the Supreme Court leak has some poll results, which are pretty shocking, actually. Uh, more on the formula shortage. Governor Pete Ricketts is batshit crazy. Speaking of. Must be a from GOP the candidate has won a primary from prison. Frank had yep. the scoop on that one. It's a good one. Uh, bad news for the uh, baby for Britney Spears. The Deadspin article, which is pretty amazing. And are we headed for a debaucherous summer, Frankie? C? Lord, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that what you're pulling for? What the hell? Every Deb- summer till now has been kind of normal. Well, that's, so kind, of, that's yeah. kind of the point. Uh, are we in for a debaucherous summer? There's a New York Post article that is absurd. So absurd. We have to share it with you. Talking about threesomes and bang clubs and all sorts of craziness, Frankie C. Whose job was it to research that? I don't know, but I'm happy to pick it up from here on out. I'll tell you what. Let's get all a right. show going here. Let's do it. <laughs> We'll address this shortly. Yeah. Well, having a you, night. You got some explaining to do. Yeah. Very annoyed. Anyway, uh, Amber Heard day 16 testimony. Um, pretty extraordinary stuff today in the old trial Rooney here. Yeah. Um, I think the big, well, one of the big uh, headlines from today is that she admitted finally that she didn't donate a portion of her divorce proceeds to the charities that she said she was going to. Well, are they officially, they're officially divorced at this point, right? This is just, this is way after this is the defamation. They're officially divorced. They're, they're divorced. This is the defamation case. But when she got divorced, she had pledged that she was going to be giving the, she said she didn't want any of the money. That was her big thing in the divorce. I don't want any of the money. I'm going to... Sh- I just went into Trump there a little bit. I don't want any of the money. Uh, there's money. I don't get credit for that, but that's okay. I never do. I'm going to uh, donate it. It's going to be fantastic. Um, she said that she was going to donate You know the money. She didn't want any of it. It was like, I guess, just like the purpose. It was like this, I'm going to take the high road, everybody. Mm. You know? Um, I'm going to donate the money away. And then like, it's been like rumored and warrant and you know, people are like, Oh, well, you know, then the, you know, people are saying, Oh, should I give the money? Then the, the charities themselves came out and they were like, we haven't gotten any money from her, you know, like that kind of a thing. Maybe so, she did it anonymously. <laughs> you know, I'm a, an, oh, wait, you don't watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, do you? No, I want to. I oh, never do. God, I, I know you think I would. I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, that's a weird one that I don't watch. It's very reason. strange. Yeah. Um, she, she, so, so that was the thing. Like she was going to, uh, you know, donate it. Then the, uh, Depp lawyer got her on the thing and cross examined her for a long time and was like, have you donated it? And she was like, well, I'm going to donate it. And the process, the, the lawyer was like, that's not what I asked you. I asked you if you have donated it. And she's like, well, I pledged to donate it. And she's like, that's not what I asked you. I asked you if you donated it today, right now, have you donated that money to charities? And she was like, no, I didn't. So she finally admitted to the fact that she had not donated that money to the charities. I mean, you can't really, you could say yes, but it's an easily proven, you know, you can't lie your way around that one. No, you really can't. Uh, and I was going to play you some audio, but. Yeah, we're lucky we could hear you. Yeah. How do I sound, by the way? Am I okay? Sounds like you're yelling at me a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. A little loud. 
Am I screaming a little loud there? Yeah, somehow between the testing and now the microphone got closer to your vocal cords. Oh, I'm sorry. And you're yelling at me. How is this? That's good. Thank you. Is this at a good level? That's at a good level. Very We're not. You're not right in my brain, which okay. is great. Janie, uh, going nuts in the uh, in the chat. I'm back. I did not have the dreaded J Sabs COVID. I had to be continued. Instead, it was determined I had the just as bad J Sabs influenza strain. Now I'm left with the permanent disability of wanting to. Case, case, surviving WW2 vets. Uh, We're going to need a clarification on that, Jane. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know know what's happening. She thinks I sound perfect. That's one of us. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck off. (laughs) Um, So Amber Heard did not donate her her, uh, divorce proceeds to charity. Unlike our proud sponsors, Frank. Right? Coffee Company. Good segue who donate 50% of their proceeds to the Navy SEAL Foundation, the very people that keep us safe here in our lovely country of the United States of America. Um, dare I say it, Jumpstart is the polar opposite of that piece of shit Amber Heard, if I can say it like that. Jumpstart won't leave a turd in your bed. You know what? I've known the Jumpstart folks for quite a while, and I'm fairly certain they've never shit on anybody's pillow. I mean, yeah. I, I'd, be a, I'd be a safe bet. Yeah. Don't you want to buy coffee from people who haven't shit on someone's pillow? That's right. nice. That's classy. Yeah. Uh, and who donate half of what they make to the Navy SEAL Foundation. I mean, we're talking about extraordinary people here, people. I understand. Yeah, they're good stuff. Good stuff from a order great company. Some, order some uh, Jumpstart right now. Link in the description below. And make sure you use that promo code AOA15. Uh, so, so your favorite podcast here gets some credit, but also so that you save 15% off your purchase. That's a good uh, deal. You can sign up for their subscribe and save right now. Make sure you do so before the end of this month, because in the third month of your um, subscription, they will uh, throw a nice little jumpstart tumbler your way. Their logo is amazing. Uh, it's been a while since we flashed it up in the corner. Let's do that now. There it is right there. Frankie C. Where is it? Corner of the screen. Uh, uh, there she is. A beautiful logo. That's on a white uh, tumbler, which is awesome. You could take it with you. You could travel. And people will be asking about it. Like, hey. Oh, what's that? What do you got there? Oh, Jumpstart Coffee. I bought a subscription. Now they dump a, a bag or two every month at my door. I never have to worry about coffee again. And oh, by the way, every time I get coffee, I'm helping the Navy SEALs of the United States of the America. So yeah, there you the go. Badass Navy SEALs, man. Yeah. So a little talking point for you. People be like, oh, my God, this person is serious. They're just constantly giving all the time. And they it's have wonderful thing. things. Beautiful yeah. thing all around. So. Plus, you get a great, great uh, bag of coffee. I mean, yeah. it's not like you're buying, you're like, ah, I'm going to donate and I'm going to get this crappy. No, you're donating. Plus, you get a great product. So all win, around win. win, all around win for everybody. Uh, Jumpstart Coffee. Thanks so much for the support, as always. And uh, make sure you guys support them by uh, purchasing a bag. Link in the description below. Right. So apparently Janie wants to chase and jump World War II vets. LOL. So I guess that's her. That's who she's oh, into. Yeah. Well, Janine wants to fuck a lot of World War II vets as well, too. So I get it now. Now it all makes sense. Yeah, now it's adding up. Yeah, now it's all coming together. Um, Back to Amber Heard, uh, Day 16 testimony. Were you going to say something else, Frank? I'm sorry. No, I'm good. Okay. Um, She also claims uh, that Johnny Depp broke her nose after the 2014 Met Gala. Okay. Um, she, her lawyer cited photos that show her without, in, uh, his lawyer cited photos that show her without injuries. Um, Depp attorney Camille Vasquez said, quote, for the record, I don't know that it was broken. I'm sorry. Heard said for the record, I don't know that it was broken. Uh, you should have seen how it looked under makeup, but Vasquez asked why Heard was, has not produced photos herself from the night after attending Spike's TV, uh, Don Rickles' One Night Only with Depp for the jury, noting that the alleged injuries aren't seen in the pictures. So you remember when they did that, they honored uh, Don Rickles? That yeah. was, I guess, right after the Met Gala, and she was like, well, you know, if you were there, then there were injuries where, you know, where, show us. I guess she could have make up it up. She said she was wearing makeup that would that would cover up the swelling, but I mean, I don't know if makeup can cover up swelling. Could cover up a mark. 
It could cover up. Yeah, it'll cover up bruising, I guess. But uh, swelling is a different story, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, that's physical change to the shape of your face. Right. So I don't know. Right. And then maybe the worst, most disgusting part of the day 16 testimony. Amber Heard said that Johnny Depp snorted cocaine with a tampon applicator. Uh, I mean, was it hopefully not used? I don't know. I'm not asking questions. Well, someone should be. Yeah. Uh, Heard was responding to a photo presented in court by Depp's lawyers that showed four lines of cocaine next to an applicator on the table. Well, to be fair, there's nothing illegal about that. There's nothing illegal about it. You're right it's about that. Gross it's, is, it's gross. <laughs> it's very gross. But, you know, guy, you know, that's how you get down. That's how you, well, I can't say there's nothing illegal about that. He's snorting coke. Well, I don't know why I said there's nothing illegal about that. That's the illegal part. The tampon applicator is not illegal. The the coke right. part's illegal. Thanks I don't for know why, Yeah, I don't know why I said there's nothing illegal about snorting coke. That doesn't that doesn't add up. Well, it doesn't make you a bad person, that's for sure. Right. It doesn't make you a bad person. Hey, it didn't doesn't make you a guy who hit anybody. True. True. Uh, Amber Heard was responding to a photo presented uh, by Depp's lawyers. Uh, Depp lawyer Camille Vasquez said, when you snore cocaine, typically it goes into your nose and then it doesn't stay on the table. There's residue from that cocaine when your lips and hose touch the table, right? And uh, Heard answered, well, the tampon applicator next to the driver's license that you see is a device that I believe my sister had taught him to use in order to put the cocaine in. Heard was questioned. To a good old dollar bill. Yeah. And also, did she have to throw her sister under the bus by saying, my sister showed him how to snort cocaine with a tampon applicator? Yeah, he could. She should have. She could have just said he learned it from someone. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you just say it was crazy time? <laughs> the sister's sister's watching sister going, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I stayed out this far. Mm. And now, yeah. Maybe, maybe the sister, the other herd is uh, is not as crazy. Then again, she's snorting coke with a tampon thing, so who knows? I mean, this this whole this this whole thing is just batshit crazy. And again, like she just consistently looks awful, like every step of the way. Yeah, I mean, it's not a good thing. And she, I think she also mentioned the the they they asked her about the poop, right? Today or yesterday? Um, today. Did they ask her about the poop? I think I saw something about that. I think she said she continues to say that it was the dog or one of the dogs or something. But it doesn't add up, man. Oh, she also I'm, I'm looking to find that. She also testified that her scenes were cut in Aquaman, too. All of them? She made Amber Heard said uh, word of the troubles between her and Johnny Depp damaged her career as well. After making a million dollars in 2018's Aquaman, um, she was contracted to receive two million dollars for the sequel. Uh, but she said many of her scenes were cut in the second installment of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, which is set to come out next year. Uh, she said, and I quote here, I was given a script, then given new versions of the script that had taken away scenes that had action in it and depicted my character and another fighting. Um, but she's is, still in the movie. It's been reported that she will have less than 10 minutes of screen time in the sequel. Hmm. She also said that her most recent role in a small independent film paid her $65,000. That's that's not nothing. That's not nothing. I mean, that's more than what some people make in a, in a year, practically. Yeah, I mean, how long could she have spent on the movie? An independent movie? A month or two? couple not even some Maybe. of these things they knock out in like three weeks right so yeah it's not a bad day's work but i mean if you're if you're making movies like aquaman i guess you're in the million category yeah i guess that's her complaint but it's an independent film how much do you think you're gonna you're gonna pull in here's one of the uh here's one of the photos that um she uh gave for testimony here and it's uh that's her texting it to her friend Step kind of like passed out. And he's spilling shit all over himself. Yep. 
again, it's so weird to me. Like I, I'm not a hater. I'm not saying Amber Heard doesn't deserve shit. I am just saying I am surprised with how much we know this guy was a drug addict. I'm surprised at how much people are on his side versus her side. Like it's 99.99% people on Johnny Depp's side. And I am just surprised that more people aren't like, hang on, maybe this cokehead did do some awful things to this woman. Yeah. The pro- maybe they were, maybe she, what's the word I'm looking here for? Provoked it. But I'm just saying I'm uh, that, uh, fine. But I'm just like, nobody is like pointing out that this guy was just a massive cokehead. And yeah, I mean, pausing for a second. Does that, am I making a point here? Am I making you a- are, you are. But the problem, I guess, the, I think the only thing is her credibility when she, her stories are, are number one that just they're, they're not adding up like when the timelines are off and the way like her her testimony when she's on the stand she's just not making everything line up and she's taking these pictures like it just seems staged almost that's the that's why nobody's buying it it seems not staged not like she posed him that way or anything but it seems like, all right, here's Johnny Depp passed out. Doesn't prove that he was abusive. It cl- proves that he had a drug problem. Right, right. Yeah, and she's got a lot of, you're right, she's got a lot of timeline issues. She's got a lot of credibility issues. I agree. All that being said, I'm still surprised that there, I'm surprised, I, you'd, have, you'd have thought it would have been 90-10. Like, I don't know where that Amber Heard support is because it is it feels like it's non-existent and i'm surprised because we've never had anything so one-sided especially lately uh in our country uh wendy brings up a good point amber is a coke head you're all a joke i'm off of here well you can go fuck yourself first second i I, i'm sure she's a coke head too i've yet to see the pictures that he's provided of her past like it there's a lot of him past the fuck out yeah, I mean, there's a lot of that, and uh, like uh, Haywood Haywood Jablomi says, uh, Coke is not a sleepy time drug. Why so many pics of him asleep? Well, I I don't know if Coke was the only thing he was doing. I think right, I was in there. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure he was doing everything possible. I think he was, he doing, was doing a few doing other things yeah. as well. I think he's not a person. If I if I could be honest, he's what. He's not he's, a person. Yeah, I can't prove it, but I'm pretty sure because remember Billy that we can't find him now. So uh, Billy's gone. Yeah. Yeah. He, he snorted Billy. Yeah. But uh, Janie brings up a good pick, uh, a good uh, point here as well. Depp said that pick was after shooting pirates for 17 hours. See, so he, he could. Yeah, he could be tired. He could be exhausted. That could be him. There's no drugs in the picture. I don't think I didn't look very closely, but didn't look like there were any drugs in that shot. It just looked like him passed out. Yeah, he spilled his drink, but he could have just passed out. Now, listen, I'll say this. I did about 45 minutes worth of yard work this weekend, and my wife could have taken that same exact picture uh, the way Amber heard that I was past the fuck at 45 minutes in 90 to 90% humidity. I was like, I look like Johnny Depp after a Coke binge. You wish. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I look like a fat. Bo- I look like Johnny Depp got stung by bees and had a bad allergic reaction <laughs> after a coke binge. There you go. That's a little better. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Uh, we don't. It, there's a lot of circumstantial evidence and a lot of hearsay and stuff. It, it's objection hearsay. Objection hearsay. It's his word against hers. She has pictures, but not. I don't know. There's nothing. Yeah, it's a lot of him passed out, which is the opposite of hitting someone. You know, you you can't really do much damage if you're passed out. Unless you're behind the wheel. Then that's a problem. Um, Let's see. Janie, yes, sorry to hear you're missing. I'm missing a husband. Just saying. Oh, we got to get Janie late, I think, is what. uh, Well, no, I think I think she's saying that Johnny Depp snorted him. Oh, that's funny. That's possible. Well, if there's anything we could do to get you laid, Janie, you just let us know. Yeah, we're, we're here for you. Mm-hmm. Hook you up. Yeah. Hey, would you blow me? Seems like he could be a, oh, a, fu- a fun time. That'd be great. I'm just saying. 
Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Coco Pop. Ant looks like he's about to burst into song with that microphone. I can't even uh, tell you the amount of I'm ready to throw this microphone through the fucking window. Oh, he is pissed. You, you're seeing the, the tone down. Anthony, you, you didn't see him before the show. It was a little, you know, fuck, just yelling at his equipment. Now, can you blame your kids for this one or is this just the equipment crapped out? I'm not sure who to blame just yet, but a partially um, Amber Heard is on my list. OK. And possibly even my children. You can't rule her out completely. Mm. Yeah. And I hear Cara Delevingne, too, might be on that list. Oh, I got it. I've had enough of her. Um, do you want to hear they quizzed Amber Heard about her makeup routine, which I found a little fascinating. OK. Um because you know because she basically said that she would be covering up the bruises and all this stuff uh she held up a color correction kit in court it, like like the makeup thing okay uh while on the stand saying she used one like it is a part of her cover-up routine she said and i quote i always wear makeup i'm certainly not going to walk around la with bruises on my face okay uh, that in any other situation that seems like something someone who got who had bruises would do cover it up, you mm -hmm. know, makes sense. I can't, I can't, you can't argue when something makes sense. That kind of makes sense. She also said that she knew she wouldn't survive if she didn't leave Johnny Depp. He, she thought that he was going to kill her. Um, All right. I mean, to your point about the dog poop, Amber Heard told jurors that when cops were called to their Los Angeles apartment, after the alleged May 16th, that May 2016 attack by Johnny Depp, she refused to name him as a perpetrator. She said, I didn't want them to arrest Johnny. I just refused to cooperate. The following day, Depp sent her a text message calling her shameless for letting her friend work out of the penthouse. He then brought up the idea of getting a divorce. Um, so he brought the idea up of leaving. Yeah. That seems like something uh, that we didn't know. I thought she was the one that wanted to leave. As as isn't that the one what she's been saying that she wanted to she was if I didn't leave him, I I, I don't know if I would have survived, that kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, he yeah. brought it up. But he well, he brought it up after this May twenty sixteen yeah. event. Um she said, let me see, uh, he wrote in the text message, I tried to make it work. You just turned more and more into a spoiled brat. Uh, all you wanted. This all is you her wanted, to him or him to her? This is him to her. Okay. All you wanted wars to make the fucking miserable. Well, I'm finally there. I'll never be able to understand how I fell in love with you. Asked by her attorney if Heard and Depp had discussed divorce the night before, the actress replied, we didn't discuss divorce. He was obsessed with dog poop. Uh, huh. So I guess he was talking about the dog poop. Uh, yeah. Um, well, she claims it's dog poop in the bed. But didn't she also, after that, say it was some kind of prank or something? At one point, there was that thing of like, oh, it was a big joke. But now she's saying it's dog poop. I don't know if she said it was a joke. Yeah. I don't remember. Or or they had something of her saying it was a joke or something. I can't remember what I can't See, remember. This what is what was. this is. This is why there's holes in this that doesn't add up. And things are everybody's what? like, this, I'm not buying it, so, you know, because it doesn't nothing seems to be lining up with what she's saying. Yeah, to me anyway. There are photos with her with a real red face, and okay. her eye looks puffy. Okay. Um. This was this was the cell phone incident, though. What's the cell phone incident? That she oh well, she testified today. This is my face after Johnny threw a phone at it, uh, referring to the May 2016 thing where Johnny Depp attacked her. Uh, said her friend took it after Johnny Depp allegedly attacked her. Image displayed in court showed a large red bruise on Heard's right cheek from different angles. Heard testified that she reunited with Depp after a month apart when his mother, Betty Sue, passed away. They made a plan, Heard said, for Depp to come over during the day to limit his drinking. She said he was talking about feces during the meeting. 
I couldn't believe he was talking about feces when his mother had just passed away. She then called her friend, author, and LGBTQ activist, I.O. Tillett Wright, and put him on speaker. Wright told Heard, Amber, get out of the house. You're not safe. Heard said when Deb heard Wright on the speakerphone, he came bounding down the stairs, grabbed the phone, and started shouting really nasty stuff at the person on the other end of the line. You want to have my bitch? You can have her. Heard quoted Depp as shouting. Heard said Depp then got a hold of the phone, uh, then got hold of the phone and hurled it at her face, hitting her in the area around her eye. Wouldn't uh, the person on the other end of the phone be able to corroborate that yelling? That's that's a third person that should be able to say, yeah, he, I was on the phone with Amber. I said to leave, and he just started he's screaming like a crazy person at me. Yeah. I feel yeah. like that's the next step. You get, you know, all right, if this really happened, this person on the other line should be able to say, not that you, not, uh, he can't, I guess, say that she, he threw the phone because he wasn't there, but he could at least say, yeah, he yelled at me and then we were disconnected. I thought, I didn't know what happened. But you're right. That person should at least be able to testify that he grabbed the phone. And he was screaming. I mean, that, that would at least add some credibility to her testimony. Some, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he threw the phone at her. No, but at least it adds a little bit to the story. I mean, if he screams like a crazy person, it makes it a little more believable that he might have thrown the phone. You know, if you could prove that he's, he, he yelled like a nut job, maybe there's something there. But yeah, you can't, he, he wouldn't be able to say, yeah, I, I, he threw the phone. But he could at least say he yelled in my ear like a nut job. I mean, that's at least something. If, if Amber Heard wants to get anybody on her side, you got to start bringing a third party. People coming in and saying, yeah, he was nuts. Yeah, he did this. Yeah, he did that. I mean, because nobody's believing her at this point. No, nobody's believing her. So uh, even Christina, right up to this moment, I think Amber is lying and did provoke him. But Johnny and Amber both share some blame. That was a very toxic relationship. Yeah, and provoking, I don't know, because uh, as much as a, uh, and this might be, I don't know, uh, as much as a woman could provoke a guy to, uh, you know, you shouldn't hit a woman in any way, you know, provoking, what, she was asking for, that she can't, you can't blame the woman for being, you know, I mean, you can't blame, yeah, the woman if the guy hit the woman, you know? That's the guy's fault if a guy hits a woman and she's not like threatening him like with I'm going to kill you. Yes, was, we've learned you never hit a woman unless there's there's going to be a death unless there's a death threat on the line here. Unless she's lunging for the, the, the airplane door. If she's going for that airplane door, then yeah. knock her ass out. Knock her the fuck out. That's Short it. of that or she's literally about to murder somebody. Right. Short of that, can't hit that woman. Uh, Jurors also heard Amber heard uh, also heard audio of the couple bickering about recording each other without permission, which the actress says they had gotten into the habit of doing as their re relationship unraveled. In one of the uh, tapes, uh, Depp is heard yelling, "You're not a fucking school teacher. You're ain't nobody's mom. You don't exist. You don't exist." Mm. All right. Yeah, there's some verbal and emotional abuse, I'm sure. Yeah. Both ways. I'm sure they both because there was recordings of her yelling stuff like you're nobody and all the stuff that him too. So they, they that yes. Uh, uh, who said it? Christina said it the best. It's a toxic relationship. They were both just eating away at each other. Yeah. But once I'm someone sure. hits the other person then that person, then the hitter is wrong. Um, it's weird though, when you're in a relationship where you're, you've, it's become a habitual thing to be recording the other person. Like that's when it's time to go. Yeah. That that's not, then there's number one's trust is completely out the window. All you're doing is, I guess you're preparing evidence. You're stacking up evidence for yourself before mm -hmm. you, before you hit the road. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. I don't think that's a, a relationship that. Can you save that kind of relationship? I don't know. 
No, I don't think so. And I feel like there should be some sort of a thing where you're like, wouldn't it be nice if you could somehow check in with people and be like, oh, you're recording people? You're recording your significant other on a daily basis? It's time to. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a, that's a red flag. Yeah. That's a red flag on that relationship. Yeah. Yeah, think, Bert, go ahead. This is a little big brotherish, but you think it would be advantageous ever to have like, you know, similar to the way you got to get your driver's license renewed or you got to go every year for that hunting license. Like, you know, maybe like every five years or so you check in with a marriage counselor. That's like so how we do it. What? Like taking tests or something like you have to take a test. I don't know about taking tests, but if it's like you just think about it, like if you had to check in with somebody every five years, it's the it's only, like, I, feel, I feel like marriage license is the only license that doesn't have to be renewed. That's true. It also uh, practically means nothing anyway. But I just feel like if you had somebody where it's like, oh, hey, how's it going? Well, you know, we've been recording each other a lot lately. Oh, OK. Let me move you on to this department. Like, yeah. it's time to. That's an issue. That's something. Some help. Yeah. Yeah. If that kind of stuff is happening, uh, Bird said it. Being toxic is one thing. Being abusive crosses a deep line. Absolutely. Uh, that, I mean, toxic. Yeah. Toxic. Yeah, everybody, you know, everybody kind of tears each other down. But then once you're in, a, once it's abuse. That's it. It's over. I mean, there's no saving that. I, yeah. I don't think. Because don't you think it's kind of like all right, I've never been in a in a bad relationship like this, but I have had some awful friendships. Oh, I, I'm fine. And <laughs> and no, but like you ever when you get into like a weird, uh, there's a weird comfort zone where you're like, oh, this becomes normal. Like you almost don't realize, like. I would say out of the two or three friendships that I've completely ended, like cut off association with the person, and maybe two, um, you look back at that afterwards and you go, what the fuck was I doing? Like how much shit did I take just to remain friends with that person? It kind of feels crazy. But at the time you're like doing all you can to be yeah. whatever, helpful, yeah. nice. Cause you're like, you know what it is? You're in there and you're going, well, you know, we're friends, so that's what friends do. We, we we're there for each other. We're there right. for each other. But then you got to keep. Then you have to ask yourself: Is this really what friends do? Because it's like a two. It's a two way street. You got to help each other out. You got to be there for each other. And if you're just constantly on the receiving end of abuse, or the one who's constantly trying to make everything okay, then it's one sided and it's not really working. I don't think. The same I, thing I, with relationships. And I think at, like with jobs, like how many times you get out of a job and then you get another job and then you're like, oh, my God, I was taking such fucking abuse. hundred percent. For no reason. Yeah. What was I doing that you what get was I doing? You get complete. I don't know if it's complacent, but you get just scared to leave. And it's, it's sad, you know, people in an abusive relationships, I, a lot of people just go, well, why don't they just leave? Well, Sometimes I guess it's not that easy uh, unless you're in that situation. You, you're you're either scared to leave. You, you 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 think there's still love there. You think there's hope. You, you know, there's always a reason. There's pe you know people. It would be a perfect, not it would be a more perfect world if people recognized abuse right away and was like, "See ya." Yeah, so it, it doesn't happen that way. It becomes this odd norm. Yeah, you know, and, and it I happens think... gradually. I'm sure. So it's like. You yeah. get a little bit more used to it and you're like, all right, I could I could deal with this. Maybe I could rein it in. And yesterday was a good day, so maybe maybe it'll be okay. And it, it you know, it, it's sad, but a lot of people go through that and it's you know, it's hard to it's hard to see from the outside too. If you see that happening to someone, you know, it's like you want to see, you want to be like you want to jump in and be like, get the hell out of there. You and should. I think more so with um, mental and, you know, just word abuse than physical abuse. Not to say it doesn't happen with physical abuse. It does. Mm -hmm. But I think I think a lot of that, too, is like, well, oh, well, they're not hitting me, you know, like that kind of shit. And then you kind of tend to stick around and it'd be like the norm. Yeah, thing. I, I think a lot of people, the abused person probably and again. This is not, I'm not a professional. I don't have any experience with this. I'm just, this is just an opinion. That's shocking to hear that with a coat hanger behind you. What's wrong with the coat hanger? 
I'm just saying, a lot, not a lot of professional doctors have a coat hanger behind them. But go ahead, make your point. I don't like you. Um, so I don't even know what I was saying now. <laughs> you, th- you totally derailed my train of thought. You're not a professional, but not a professional. Oh, the, I, it's it becomes it's, because it has happens gradually. I guess the, the abused person maybe makes an excuse for this time. Oh, this time wasn't so bad, or maybe right. they go, oh, I, uh, you know, I provoked him or her or whoever, so it was kind of my fault. And you because. Because you know the person, and you want you're in love supposedly, and you just you know, you're trying to make excuses like, oh, they're we're working on it, that kind of thing. It'll get better, and you just sometimes it it doesn't. Most of the time, I think I feel like most of the time, but I don't know. Yeah, because again, I'm not proposing Big Brother shit here, but like I feel like your friends should handle this, but some people don't have that friend or aren't honest, and I feel like maybe sometimes if just given the opportunity, because you have to. It's the same thing with like when you get old and you're like, oh, I can drive, I can drive. And then you fucking wind up taking out, you know, seven uh, car mirrors, uh, you know, that's why you have driving tests for old people. Yeah. Like, yeah, maybe after a while, every five years, you just kind of could be over this Zoom. old people thing. No, 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 it's a lot of a lot of younger people, too. No, a lot of people out there don't know how to drive. Mm. Old or young. Maybe. Maybe. That's true. All right. Uh, oh, appreciate Janie on the super chat there, encouraging everybody to uh, hit that like button. Uh, yes. That's very important, very helpful. Helps it the algorithm. Help. Yes, does help a lot. Appreciate helps, that. Helps us get recognized. Uh, also, I think maybe Robin has a solution here for us, Frank. All Coke dealers should have marriage counseling skills when selling to a couple. That, again, there's no bad ideas in a brainstorming session, which this podcast is. Maybe that helps everybody if we have some counseling diplomas for the Coke dealers. Two birds, one stone on that one. Like, you yeah. know, you're helping out. You might be doing a little damage, but maybe it's one step back, two steps forward. Yeah. But just think about it, how nice it would be if your Coke dealer was like, hey, I enjoy selling Coke to you guys, but I also want to make sure you're okay and that you're, you know, not yeah. pooping on each other's pillows and such. Have you tried role playing <laughs> with the Coke? Yes. Just integrate it. I got gotcha. you. These are all building blocks to good ideas. They might not be good ideas now. No such thing as a bad idea. That's but not we're true on at all. all. Yeah. There are so many bad ideas out there. <laughs> all right, here's a bad idea. Uh, Ghislaine Maxwell is getting transferred. We haven't talked about Ghislaine in quite a while. It's been a while, yes. Been a little while. But last week, um, Ghislaine, because she's still in the uh, Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn. Okay. Uh, but last week, she was moved to Gen Pop. General population. Really? Those laymen out there. Yeah. But the same facility, though. Same facility. Uh, of course, you remember for the better part of, a, I don't know, a year and a half, maybe two years. How long has she been in prison for? I forget now. Yeah, it's been, I'd say, before, right as COVID started, maybe around there. Mm, yeah. 2020? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, right, so, so roughly about two, two years. years. Um. She's been in uh, solitary, and uh, now that uh, she's been found guilty of right. being one of the most horrific traffickers in the history of the planet, mm-hmm. eh, let's move it to Gen Pop. Why not? What could go wrong? No, I can't see anything yeah. bad happening there or good happening there. <laughs> Depends on how you look at it. I mean, but, dear Lord, if yeah. you remember... Uh, when Epstein got arrested by himself, and then they were like, yeah, we could put him in a cell with somebody else. Dead. Very dead. Yeah, that didn't... Uh... Yeah. Well, I guess, you know, you got maybe there's a plan there. I would love to know what it is because, frankly, I'm concerned. I mean, did she... I doubt that she asked for this. I don't really know how it works, and nobody really seems to have any sort of reasoning. I mean, I don't know if I, f- I mean, remember, was she on Suicide Watch? Was she not? She was taken off. She was put back on. Then we thought she was put back on, but she was never put back on. Remember, we went through all this rigmarole with her. Right. Um, so I don't know where that all wound up, but this whole entire time she was in solitary. Right. Now that she's facing a really long time where she's basically going to die in prison, now they think she's not suicidal and she can come off of 
Well, I don't know if it's it maybe. I, I don't know if it's so, what what she would have to worry about. I'm sure is uh, getting uh, you know so the it, other inmates coming after her. Yeah, because she's got a she's got a cellmate now. You know, yeah, that's and, gonna be it's gonna be an issue for her. That's gonna be now, a sleep with one eye open kind of scenario. Now, the one thing I will say is she can now have visitors, and that's all part of this because I don't think that you get that privilege in solitary. I also think that there are because COVID is kind of subsiding. I also think the restrictions have loosened up a bit there too. Mm -hmm. So her family was all like, oh, well, we're excited because we never really got to talk to her. I think they all had like five minutes with her in court one day when she was uh, towards the end there. I forget when, what day it was exactly, but she was able to spend some time with her family, uh, her brothers and her sisters. But uh, yeah, it seems like very quietly, uh, without making too much noise, they just moved her into general pop. And so it's happened already. She's in. She's oh, yeah. In for a week. She's been in there for a week. She's been in gen pop for a week. And, you know, again, like uh, you're in the yard and uh, you're going to lunch. And there's just like a lot of opportunities to, you know, for something I mean, to go wrong. It's not uncommon. I mean, we all we all watch movies. We know what happens in, in prisons. So who knows what's uh, what's going to happen? Uh, yeah, someone like that walking around Gen Pop is probably not safe, is what we're saying. I mean, most of my experience is based off of Oz, and if this was an episode of Oz, she wouldn't last fourteen minutes. Right. Okay? By the end of the episode, before credits roll, this bitch would be dead. Yeah, I don't know what whose idea it was to move her, but it's not someone with her best interest in mind. I'll tell you that much. Uh, the brother also was uh, telling the the uh, telegram in the UK. She finally has access to things she has not had for almost two years, starting with human company. The prison guards were told not to talk to her. She's had no human interaction. She's had no human company. Um, uh, she's kept her head held high. I admire her determination. That's what her brother said. Yeah. Hmm. She's got one fan. Yeah, well, she's got three or four. She's got a lot of siblings, but okay. But yeah, um, again, I just feel like way too much can go wrong here. And although, uh, you know, I don't think anybody's going to cry if this one's found dead, I still kind of think that it's better if she rot in a prison for the next 40 years, you know? Right. That's what I would rather see than... Yeah, than so so sort now. of the easy way out kind of thing. Yeah, let her yeah. fucking suffer in there. Let her... Yeah, stick her in a hole and lock the door, throw away the key. It's just weird. It's just this was the reason why she was put in solitary to begin with. What's changed? Kind of absolutely nothing. So yeah. I don't know why this was allowed to happen. I feel like any day now we're going to get, oh, you won't believe this. But I guess it was found dead in the prison cell. Like, Yeah, we'll believe it. Well, will we? If that happens, I'm sure there's, there's going to be a, a a faction of people that's going to be like, is she really, or uh, you know, just like just like what's his name, and then they're going to think, mm. God, God knows what people are going to think. Yeah, who knows? All right, so, I want to know what you're going to think about this, Frank. Uh, there's some Sports Illustrated swimsuit controversies out there. Okay. Um. So a couple things with this. They, they picked a Sports Illustrated model to be on the cover of, uh, of the Swimsuit Edition. Right. And people went crazy. That's one part. The second part is supposedly Kim Kardashian is also going to be a swimsuit cover model for this year. Okay. Which makes me think that they have more than one. Which is Wait, kind of bullshit. How many issues come a uh, swimsuit issues come out in a year? One. But I okay. think it's going to have multiple cover models. That's oh, so it's a couple of people on it at the same time. Okay, yeah, interesting. Because uh, of course, there's multiple swimsuit models in the issue. Sure, but who um, gets the cover is the big deal. Who gets the cover is a big deal. But I guess now they just kind of give it to all of them, which kind of makes mean, sense in in a way because you're getting more publicity out of having everybody. You know. So who's the other person? Okay, so the other young lady who is on the cover of Sports Illustrated, her name is, I'm going to butcher this. 
That's a weird name. <laughs> <laughs> well, she had hippie parents, Frank. To oh. be fair, all right. Uh, parents were very, very hippie-ish. Mr. And, and I'm going to butcher this. is quite lovely, actually, now that I think about yeah. it. Mr. and Mrs. Butcher This. Yumi New. Y-U-M-I-N-U. Okay. Okay. Um, let me bring up her uh, gram so gram everybody can get a, a look at Yumi New. You can Google her. You bring her. it up her grandma? I'm going to bring up her, her Instagram, not her grandma. Oh, not if, her gram gram. Let's leave gram. grams out of this. Just the gram, not the gram gram. Yeah. So uh, let me set this up here because I got a couple of things to show you. Um, and let's start with her. Let's start with her gram. So here's Yumi News gram. There she is on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Now, be honest, Frank. What's different about Yumi than, say... Cindy Crawford and some of the other people have graced this cover in the past. Yeah, she's not anorexic. I get it. She's a little heavier. It's okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Here's a selfie that she took. I'll make this bigger so everybody can get a nice little sense of of Yumi New. Now she's got like a mask on here, so that's you yeah, know obviously she, you can't hey, see her face. She's still rocking it. But she's what I guess people would consider a plus size model. Sure. Uh still gorgeous, by the way. Uh, she's Absolutely. got a beautiful face. Hundred percent. So, what's the controversy? She could. Why can't she be on the cover? Is the controversy that there's more than one? Is that the? Well, that's what pissed me off because no. Here, I found out about the controversy, and then I found out there was more than one cover model, and now I'm kind of pissed. And I'll I'll tell you why in a second. Let me bring this up here, uh, so everybody has this. Uh, Jordan Peterson. Do you know what Jordan Peterson is? No. Uh, likes to go on Rogan a lot. He's a doctor, um, best-selling author, clinical psychiatrist, psychologist. Uh, he does an education podcast that's super popular. Okay. Um, and he jumped on Twitter right away as soon as Sports Illustrated and everybody started announcing that Yumi was going to be on the cover, and this is what he had to say. Sorry, period, not beautiful, period, and no amount of authoritarian, 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 merengue, mm -hmm. viola, authoritarian tolerance is going to change that. Who the fuck are you, pal? This guy's an asshole. Just that's my blanket statement. He's an asshole. Mm. That's an asshole thing to say. It was such a big thing that he started trending more than her. <laughs> yeah, when you when you're a dick, everybody just pounces on you like that because that's that's a dick thing to say. Because number one, she is beautiful. You can't. I don't know why anybody would think would look at her and say ugly. Well, okay, let's let's. She's not let's, bad looking. Let's knock irreparable like let's get things out of the way that cannot be challenged she has a gorgeous face 100 percent. i mean she's stunning look if you look at her let's ignore the body for a second because that's where we're why no i just, think she has a great body let's just knock out the things that we all agree upon like nobody on the planet would say this girl has an ugly face right nobody on the planet she's gorgeous she's beautiful yeah 100 percent. a little bit of a bigger body than normal so what? And I guess the question is, and and this is where I, I wonder. So let's put my anger towards Sports Illustrated to the side for a second. Because we're going to get to that. Remind me, though. Let's get back to that, Frank. I guess my question is, and this is the question when, when this stuff comes up all the time. And thanks, Harmony Ann, for the super sticker, four ninety nine. We appreciate that. Thank it's you, awesome Harmony Ann. Um, my question is, and I think this is where... Um, Peterson is coming from At where, where do you stand? How do we determine what's healthy and what's not right? Cause I think the issue here is and all kidding aside, like let's say, let's say Peterson's not an asshole, right? Where do we, where does inner beauty, which is a real thing. And beauty should be is subjective. First of all, agreed. 
where does inner beauty intersect with like a healthy lifestyle? Right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people will caution and concern like Adele had to deal with a lot of this shit. It's funny with Adele is Adele dealt with it on both angles. Right. right? Oh, and hey, would you blow me? He's when Anthony said normal, not not as thin as normal. Normal for the cover. What we're accustomed to. On the cover. Yeah. Usually let's not, it's let's not play games. This is the first time we've ever seen somebody weigh this yeah. much on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Yeah. No, no weight is normal. Don't everybody have has me. a different yeah. everybody has a different weight. He's talking about what's usually normal. on the the, the the body type that's usually on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Yeah, that's, the norm. That's, I remember who is that Brooklyn Decker? Brooklyn Decker is a fucking knockout. Right. Mm -hmm. She's not a twig. And I remember this conversation happening when Brooklyn Decker was put on the cover of the swimsuit issue. Like she's I, I wouldn't even call her slightly. Chunk. I just she's not a tooth. She's not anorexic like you made the joke a minute ago. And yeah, people were no. kind of like making waves that like, oh, look at who they put on. It's not a toothpick like that. I don't understand. I, I don't care who's on the cover. They're in the swimsuit. That's what it's it's about. Isn't it a swimsuit? You're a swimsuit model. Everybody wears swimsuits, no matter how big or small. You know, what, what's the what's the difference? Well, so I I think the issue is, and again, getting back to my Adele point, like so Adele came out. You know, she was a little heavy when she came out, and then at certain points, like everybody started talking about her weight, and then that's all that people wanted to talk about. And then like she lost all the weight, and then people were kind of like body shaming her for losing all the weight. And well, like, those people, I don't know that she had to change herself. But then there's also the people and this is where this becomes a knot to me. There's also the people that are like, well, she's healthier this way and she's getting herself healthy. You know, so it's mm -hmm. kind of like when you put, you know, somebody who's not a toothpick on the Sports Illustrated thing. Are we telling people, women, young girls you know, this is okay. Is that bad? Because then we're telling them you shouldn't strive to be healthy or is it good because we're telling them you shouldn't worry about image so much. It's the image that she's the question. I'm sure. Uh, what's her name? Uh, uni. 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 I'm sure she's. Uni. Yumi. Yumi. I'm sure she's, I'm sure she's healthy. I mean, you know, uh, just because you're not, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the, what's it called? Like the model they use in, uh, on, on like TV for, you know, advertisements in, uh, in health magazines or whatever the hell it is. It doesn't mean you're not a healthy person. You could be, you could have a little extra weight and still be healthy. It doesn't make you unhealthy. Agree. Plus that's just some people, that's just your body type. You, you're just a, you know, you have uh, everybody has different shapes. We're not all shaped the same way. And a bigger person doesn't mean unhealthy. It just means they have a little more mass and it's not a big deal. Well, you know? and I think she's got a, a full figure, right? She's got that hourglass figure still. Yeah. And she looks great. I think she looks great. But again, my question still stands, which is where does it, it where is it? It's healthier to not worry about body image, begin and end. And where does body shaming somebody, you know, you know what I no, mean? No, no. Or, or there's no or, or saying like, oh, it's OK to just be unhealthy. Well, that's the, OK. Here's what it is. Her body is nobody else's business. If you want to look at this magazine and then and not look at her. The GOP, I'm just saying. And look at her. Right. Yeah. You said look at her. Not true. Right. If you want to look at this magazine, look, you know, admire her, uh, admire the way she looks. Great. If you don't, then don't buy the magazine. Her body does not like and her health is not your concern. It's not anybody else's concern. She's on the magazine. That's the way she looks right now. And they're put, what are we saying? We can't put anybody who is slightly above average weight on any kind of magazine cover or any this is you know or any uh in, in the spotlight in any way this is 
a, a model wearing a swimsuit. That's what the that's what the magazine is about. And there's arguments in the in the chat a little bit that it's supposed to be um, uh, an athletic sports illustrated it's supposed to be an athletic. Who says she can't? Play a sport. She probably she. Could it play. is Sports Illustrated, Frank. It's not High Times. If this was High Times, that'd be one thing, right? What, what do you mean? Like high, you know, people get high and they just eat snacks on the couch. They, they there exactly. No, but this is Sports Illustrated. Anybody can play sports. Uh, there are people of all shapes and sizes playing all kinds of different sports. You don't have to be rail thin to play any. You know, to play sports. Yeah, that's that's not what it's about. It's about, and especially the swimsuit issue is really, if you, if you want to call that a sports magazine, yeah, it might be called Sports Illustrated, but it's about women in bikinis is what it's about and the modeling these, these, these things. So this happens to be someone who's not rail thin and she still looks great and she's putting, she has a bikini on. I don't understand why, you know, why she, why it's such a big deal. Let her be I, on, the, well, on the cover, everybody. I wonder, and I'm not saying I agree with this, but I wonder if Jordan's, Dr. Jordan B. Peterson's point of his tweet is, again, this, we have to, you know, culture is moving in a certain direction and cancel culture, and if you don't agree and accept this, you're a piece of shit right away, you know, that kind of thing. Now, listen, I think that's I think that's what he's saying. I'm not saying well, I'm saying that. I'm not saying I necessarily agree. Again, not everything has to get caught up into this left versus right, you it's, know, yeah, it's not either thing. But I think that's the point that he's making of like this would not have been done 30 years ago. Yeah, and, a lot of things wouldn't have been done 30 years ago. Right. But and but like, is there a specific reason why? Because are we um, are we by doing something like this, just telling everybody, you know, it's okay. Like, uh, look, obviously people are going to struggle with weight. You don't have to talk to me about that. Uh, you know, I fucking well-versed in that area. But I think is what we're saying is, is this constant, should we ever lose that, that, um, drive to be healthier? Should we ever lose that? And are we telling people, but something like this, it's okay to it's okay to just kind of, you know, give it up. I'm not saying that's what to, she's doing. I'm sure she's athletic. I'm sure she probably works out or whatever. That's just her body type. I'm sure she. I'm sure she works out. I'm sure she stay. You know, she does whatever she has to do to work out certain parts of her body. She stays in shape. She's not, you know, gigantic. She's not like a. You know, she's a little bit heavier than the average swimsuit model i'd say i guess but she's but not answer, unhealthy i don't think answer this question they could have put a toothpick they could have put a non-toothpick on this cover mm -hmm. that wasn't as big as her correct they could put it they could put anybody on the cover they could put uh a, you know i don't know a skinny person that not a toothpick sure they could have put anybody they've done that for years it's not always a toothpick it, but who says that the toothpick is going to be quote beautiful you know I, I don't think the toothpick is beautiful i've that's been my biggest issue for the longest time you got all these women that are fucking toothpicks some of them look like underage boys and they're on these fucking covers and i'm going how is this a fucking attractive like that i think is wrong that I think is extraordinarily wrong. That's why beauty is subjective. You could put the skinniest supermodel on there, and there's going to be someone who goes, "I don't find that to be, you know, I don't think That'd that's attractive." Right. I and then you put, then you put a heavier person on there, and every, there's people that'll go, that, "Beautiful, oh my god, stunning," yeah. you know. And so beauty is subjective. This guy, if his point, if this doctor, his point, first of all, violating the Hippocratic Oath, in my opinion, do no harm. I feel like that's very harmful what he says. Well, my do opinion. psychologists take the Hippocratic Oath? Any doctor does, I feel. Uh, any doctor? I feel like, yeah, it's not just like surgeons. I feel like every doctor has. If you're a doctor, I feel like you take that oath. I'll have to check with my doctor. Do you know my doctor, right? Dr. Vinny Dr. Vinny Boombats, yeah. He's a good, yeah, good guy. All right. Um, but first of all, if his point is this isn't, 
if his point is this is an unhealthy person, then you don't have to say that they're not beautiful. What if, you know, they, they could be beautiful. You could say he said it like a dick, number one. he uh, uh, I'm going to let you finish your point because I'm going to bring up a new tweet. Are you kind of me? I agree with you a billion percent. He said it like a dick. Like there is a nice way to do things. And that is not it. This I don't is even what, think, just keep your mouth shut. If you if you think she's not beautiful, fine. Keep your well, mouth shut. This is what he said. Rage away, panderers, and tell me you believe that such images are not conscious and cynical manipulation by the oh so virtuous politically correct. This guy is a dick of epic proportions. This is a beautiful woman on a magazine. I don't understand why he has to turn this into a cynical manipulation by the oh so virtue. It's a beautiful woman on a magazine. Let's not make this, uh, you know, the next friggin' uh, Roe v. Wade issue. This is just a woman on a magazine. Uh, move on, buddy. You don't think she's beautiful? Don't buy the magazine. Why are you hyper-focused on this thing? Well, that's not an issue. Nobody buys magazines anymore, Frank. There's no... Whatever. Not in any harm to do that. There's no threat of that happening. I'm sure there are people who collect uh, Sports but, Illustrated uh, swimsuit. I will say, again, first of all, I bang this shit out of Yumi, okay? And you know my record. I've done far worse than, than fucking Yumi, okay? So, first of all, she's... Uh, I, uh, looks like a supermodel. She's a, yeah, I think I don't even what's the super. I, she's a model. I don't know what can, model, I think there's like a, a pay hierarchy or like, yeah, you know, the things you've modeled for. She's been modeling a bunch just to give a little background and then we'll get back to this tweet. And then I'm going to get to what Jack had to say, because that's it's important. We've got a lot going on. We'll get to all of it mm -hmm. um, just to give a background. She went into her. She went to the office of her manager to do like a meeting on something. And then the Sports Illustrated people like popped on and were like, hey, guess what? You got the cover of Sports Illustrated. So she didn't even I don't think she even knew this was coming. So this was a big surprise to her. Not like she like tried out for it or, you know, was um, like in the running or, you know, I, I don't know what the word is, but she was surprised. They, they surprised her with the new. She was caught off guard. Obviously, she took a picture in the swimsuit. You know, uh, but I don't know if she knew that it was for this or if those pictures were for something else and they got a hold of it and they were like, we'll, we'll use these. These will be great. We'll put you on the cover. We'll include you into the uh, into the magazine. Wait, they put her on the cover without shoot, knowing she, she was taking these shots without knowing they were going on the cover. Yeah, because I think what happens is I think you just you go for the shoot and then I think it's like determined. It, it depends sure on how the, the photos come out. And I'm sure she had to approve. Yeah, I like to be on the cover. I'm sure she had to agree to be on the cover. I don't know. Well, I think you just kind of sign up for that stuff. Like, okay, you know, either I, way. I think, I think you're just like, oh, hey, we're considering you for the issue. Great. And you just go and you take the picture. You don't well, necessarily know you're the cover. Well, at some point, she had to have seen that it was possible that she was going to be put on the. Like, if she signed something to be a part of a photo shoot. There had to be someone there or in their contract saying you could possibly end up on Sports Illustrated's yeah, swimsuit cover. I don't know. Her management could have had that ability to be like, yeah, here you go. You know, who knows? I mean, that might be part she of She has their... to approve whatever it is, her or her management or whatever yeah. would have to approve it. But what I'm saying is it's this per it's Sports Illustrated's magazine. It's not Dr. Whoever's magazine. It's not my magazine. They want to put whoever on the cover. They can put whomever on the cover if they want to put a, a, a guy on the cover. If they want to put whoever, it's their magazine. Yeah, they can put put whoever they want on. It. All right, well, we'll get back to Jordan Peterson in a second. But Jack me off for two dollars had a good point. How about Lizzo on the cover? Just asking. Okay, great. I am not sure if I have said this publicly, but I have been saying this. Perhaps if not on the podcast, take my word. I've been saying this off podcast for a long time. Lizzo is on lipo watch. I call it Lizzo lipo watch. I am counting down the time till Lizzo goes through a massive weight loss and becomes skinny Lizzo. And the reason why I say that is because every single artist that ever breaks that's overweight, which is very rare, it's very easy to track. They all go through massive transformations and they all eventually wind up losing weight. 
And I am stunned that Lizzo hasn't done that yet. But I also think that it's still kind of early for her. Right around that fourth, fifth, sixth year of being like a mega star is when they disappear for a while and maybe and drop all the way. Well, it doesn't have to be lipo. It could be maybe she just goes on a, a six month super yeah, you know, that's exercise. It doesn't work as good as Lizzo lipo. Liz, uh, yeah. See what I'm doing there? I got it. But my point is, is you go up and down the list. I We mentioned Adele. Uh, Jennifer Hudson, same thing. Remember, Jennifer Hudson was the bigger girl in all the movies. Then yeah, she lost she... all the weight. All right. Yeah, everybody goes through different Every... weights. Ricky Gervais was the fat, chunky, funny UK guy. Now he's a skinny guy wearing, you know. Jonah Hill. Everywhere. Jonah Hill. He goes up and down and up and down. And no, up and but down. fucking Danny DeVito is the only one we have. That's the only guy we've ever. He's consistent. Fat, and he's just been like, I'm just going to be fat. And that's it. I'm fat Danny DeVito. And I don't even know if he's girl. fat. He's just squat. He's squat. But that's it. Every Stout. we lose. We lose all of them, Frank. We that we either lose them to weight loss or like John Candy and fucking Belushi and Chris Farley. They die. It's it's one of the two. They never. Well, ever Chris Farley around. and Belushi was drug related. Well, yes, but also those tacos and shit didn't help. Yeah, I'm sure their heart couldn't take. Look at Johnny Depp. He's been doing coke for 30 years and he's fine. You know what I'm saying? It's just the weight doesn't help. Doesn't help. Yeah, I got you. But um, yeah, if Lizzo was on the cover, that's Sports Illustrated's choice to put that person on the cover. And if you don't think she's beautiful or attractive that's fine too you don't have but, to be but the attracted point and that, no, the point is is that nobody thinks that because if adele really felt that way she'd still be heavy if jennifer hudson felt that way she'd still be heavy so, okay so what's so what because this, they all opted for a healthier when you say they all they both i mean this woman uh i keep I said Ricky her name. right yeah well what's it you me knew you me knew she obviously li- likes her body the way it is so she's fine with it. What's the problem? She think you know. I think the pro. I think not the problem, but I think the issue is is once you rack up X amount of money in the bank, and you rack up that ability where you don't have to show up to work for a nine to five, or even do a rigorous touring schedule like these artists, these singers have to do, or these models have to do at the beginning. Once you have that time and you're sitting around, most people, almost everybody, go. Uh, I better lose it. I got to get this weight off me. I, I can't have this anymore. Well, if it becomes, you know, if you're unhappy with the way you look and you're and you go to the doctor, the doctor says you have to lose weight, you're unhealthy, that you, this is a problem, your arteries, all blah, blah, blah. Then, yeah, you, you, do, you do better to take care of yourself. Fine. But if she is happy with the way she looks, she's comfortable and she's healthy, you could be a little heavier. I feel like you could be a little heavier than average. And still be a healthy person. There are heavy people that live to be in their nineties. It's not like it's who you know, I don't know. I can't name anybody in their nineties, but still, I feel like you could still be healthy and live and live your normal life and not have to stress about I got to lose all this weight. There, are, there are lots of people out there that are a little overweight and are perfectly fine, and you know that's that's the way they live. I think a little overweight's fine. Um, yeah, like this woman on the cover is not, she's not obese. She's not, you know, clinically, I think she'd be considered obese. Like most people, a lot of people are. The, the well, what's obese? I, I think it's like 15 pounds overweight or something crazy. 15 like pounds. It's not, it's something ridiculous. You'd be surprised how, how many people are overweight or are, are okay. obese. She's not morbidly obese. What's okay. I'll give you that. But she looks, I think she looks great. And if she's healthy, I mean, I think she looks great the way she is. When her health is not, uh, you know, um, what's being you know, that's not our business. It's none of my business. It's her. It's her own business to take care of her her health if she Again, wants to or weight if hot. she wants to. Yeah, she's hot. I've done far worse, Frank. Yeah, you know, you know that. Uh, I I sure. wouldn't turn her down at all. Sure. Um, and by the way, I, I've said this a bunch. It's it's we're in the era of the the fat ass. Like fat asses are so big butts in are right in now. Yeah. yeah. So now is the time if we're ever going to have a girl like this to be on the cover. Now is the time. But there is maybe some truth 
to what he says here, where this is a certain portion of thought trying to manipulate everybody and to thinking a certain way. What does Sports Illustrated care about other people? Uh, other people's weight. I think a little bit of it is like. I think maybe some of the people that make these decisions perhaps pat themselves on the back a bit too much over look at what I did. I think we I think we assume that's what happens. It could be someone who said we have this really hot looking model. Why don't we why don't we put her on the cover? We've been doing this for years. Why not showcase beauty in other uh, forms and other shapes of people what's what's the problem it doesn't have to it doesn't always have to be i'm gonna jam political correctness down your throat that's not always the case i feel like they said you know what we've been doing the same thing for years why not show a different side of the the coin here where maybe someone with a uh, you know that's a little heavier is can also be seen as beautiful i think that's i think it's fine i and i think this doctor is, a, is an asshole <laughs> that's my that's that's my opinion. If he didn't think it, if the if he didn't think that she was beautiful or had a problem or had so you just why why point why go on Twitter and be like this is not you're not beautiful. It's like shut up, go away. You're you're just a you're just a dick looking for attention. Someone said that in the chat, and I think they're right. Well, like for instance, take a look at Ashley Ashley Graham. I think it's Ashley Graham. Ashley Graham, yeah, another supermodel. That, that's a little on the heavier that's side. That's heavier, and she's total hot figure. She everything. Looks great. I would argue, perhaps a bit more healthier than Miss New here. I don't know. I, I'd have to side by side it, but I think that's. I think whatever. I mean, the beauty. Over slightly overweight or overweight people, any weight can be beautiful, and that's the point. Any weight is beautiful. You you could be a beautiful person and be overweight. That's I don't see the controversy here. Well, again, beauty on the inside versus are we encouraging? Are we you know are we telling people it's okay to be unhealthy? No, I think we're talking about. This person looks beautiful. I think that's the point of this magazine. It's here. Look at this person in a swimsuit. I don't think I don't know. I haven't. I don't know if there are articles going into their lives. Like, is there like, is she featured in like an interview or something? Well, I don't. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, they all get a little. They get like some kind of thing. A couple. Yeah. Pages. What's your favorite haircut? You know. Great. OK. Shit. So I feel like. Tell us about that moisturizer you love so much. You know? I think there's some inner beauty there. Sure. They want to be. You know, hey, look, let's get a little insight into this person. Great. And also, here's your picture in a swimsuit. Well, here's what pissed me off a bit. When I found out that fucking Kim Kardashian was going to be on the cover, too. That felt a little like if I'm Yumi New, I feel like there's an asterisk here. Why? Because. Oh, it's a little of an insult. Why can't I? Why can't I be the lone model? Why can't I carry the cover myself? Because now, because now, if I'm Yumi, this is what I'm thinking. They're just putting me on there to to a, sell some more magazines to the women that are that are slightly overweight that are gonna like fucking identify. Because the, there's women that are gonna be like, finally, myself on the cover of them. They're gonna identify with this and be like, "Wow, this is fucking great." When again, the executives, not to be an asshole here. But are they doing this because Yumi's beautiful and this is what they feel is right? Or are they doing this to sell a few more magazines to overweight women and then fucking pat themselves on the back, acting like they helped society these day, today? I think that she, I don't see why she shouldn't have her own. She should be on the cover by not herself. The, not the question. Should be fine. question in hand is what's really happening here? How are we supposed to know? I don't know. I mean, it's has anybody has there ever been in Sports Illustrated history two models on the cover? I think they've split the cover up in the past before. Okay, so this is not unprecedented. But it's not been this big thing of like, you know, we're breaking a glass ceiling here or we're knocking down a wall or whatever it is. Again, I would feel a little like, what the fuck? Am I just being used here? Well, maybe this is for the 
doctor assholes of the world who are like, well, I don't find this person beautiful, but I can look at Kim Kardashian. It's like, you know, they're trying to please people who want to see all different types of, of women. I don't know. It could be that. Mm. I don't think it's I, 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 I like to I tend to err on the side of benefit of the doubt a little bit here. Um, and I think they're just trying to put a new another shape of woman out there. It's OK to be this. It could be a little bigger and be beautiful. And that's fine. Agree. Uh, you know, and the caption or the I guess the whole campaign of this is be the change you want to see. So better to start now than five years from now. But I, ha I have to ask the question as a skeptical New York asshole. The fuck were you five years ago then? You know, where was this change that you want to be five fucking years ago? Ten years ago. Maybe new people in charge. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe. New, you know, there's obviously everybody's there are new ways of thinking these days. There's new there's steps forward for different everything. So this is another step forward. I, think. I will say, although I I I am skeptical too. I would hate to be Jordan uh, Peterson here and and live and live like have this. I always feel like you hope for the best, like you just said, uh, benefit of the doubt. Hope it's good to fucking walk around with this sort of mentality all the time. That's a kind of a fucking sad existence. Yeah, he's an asshole. Next, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cara Delevingne. Delevingne. Yeah, you know who this is. I do. Who she was. Have you ever, did you ever see uh, Suicide Squad? Yes. She's the bad guy. She's the witch. I don't remember a witch in there. She's the one that, the bad guy. She's the one that, uh, remember in the meeting, and the, I don't know, the, the government meeting where she's like an explorer. Then, you know, that famous, not famous, but that scene where it was kind of cool where the hand, here, watch, when the hand went like this. And then flipped over, and it was like the witch's hand now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how she changed into the witch. That was her. She was the she was the main bad guy. She was also in some, I forget what streaming thing it's on. Maybe like Showtime or something. She's in some TV series where she's like a like a fairy of some kind. Can't remember what it's called. It's her and Orlando Bloom. Is everybody a fairy or vampire? This what I don't know. Vampire you. craze from a couple of years ago. We've never come down from that. Now it's all fairies, vampires, witches. It's well, vampires are, are fun. Um, what we do in the shadows, I'm a big fan of that. That's a that's a vampire show, and it's, I like it. You want to know what I do in the shadows? That's not for public nobody, consumption. Nobody wants to know that. Mm. But um, yeah, Ka Cara Delevingne, and she's a she's a model. You know, that's the, her big claim to fame is that she's a model, and she was also she was in a Taylor Swift video. She's done some stuff. Okay, I'm gonna put it in the. Uh, I, I'm gonna put it in the chat here because I can't share this, you know. But um, annoying as shit at this Billboard Music Awards with Megan The Stallion. Yeah, she did look like she was having a little too much fun, <laughs> getting in, in the on the nerves of some people. It was. I don't know. You know what though? Nobody seemed annoyed in those videos. They didn't seem like they were like ah oh, rolling their eyes at her or like oh this one again. She was in everybody's face and being kind of a, a she, she like put her fit like Megan was looking up at stage and she was sitting to the right of Megan. She put she curled her face around to be like right in her fuck. This is what my six year old does. It makes drives me crazy. I can't imagine Megan the Stallion loving it. Well, you're talking about the, the shot when she won when Megan the Stallion won and she I, th I think so because th she wasn't in. Her I, no, I saw that one. You I don't know if you saw it she, in her fuck like. I like, didn't see well, it in her face. I saw her like poke out from behind. She was behind Doja Cat. Th there was that one. Then there was the one where she's on the red carpet. I don't know if I sent you this picture. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. She's on the red carpet. And there you can see Kara like off in the distance about to go behind the, the thing. And she's like kind poking of, her head out and staring yeah, at her. Yeah. I think she was she was like a kid having a lot of fun. And it was I could see it being very annoying because then she grabbed. I think it was Megan Lee Stallion again. She was hanging out with her the whole time. Uh, she grabbed her her dress and was like throwing it up in the air for like yeah. the cameras. It was very weird. And I thought it was the least worst because it looked like she was just trying to make a, the pictures like cool. A fluttery thing, yeah. The worst, which I just put in the chat, Megan was on the stage. I don't know if this was after or whatever. And Kara was on the floor and starts licking her shins and licks her entire body the entire way up. 
like mimes it. Doesn't really actually lick it, right? No, she was licking. Oh, okay. Yeah, there was contact. Well, that's all right. That's weird. <laughs> that's no, weird. that is weird. She was she was weirding out. She was being a little bit of a weirdo in that one. Um, like, she, like Megan looked like she was performing, and here was this weirdo just fucking licking her. Somebody said she was on drugs, which I could definitely believe because that's crazy. She was acting a little like she was on bath salts or something. That's fucking crazy to be <laughs> licking somebody from head to toe. Yeah, she was a little weird, um, especially in the era of COVID. I mean, I know it's kind of gone, but still, she she is that like from the limited things that I've seen, she has like this that kind of crazy, kooky personality. Yeah, from what little I know about her, but this was yeah, I, I would admit this was a little over the top. Fucking crazy, crazy. Speaking of over the top, jack me off. As uh, did you guys see the Nicolas Cage vampire pics? He's he is Dracula. He is coming out with a, I think it's a TV show called uh, Ren Ren uh, Renfro or Ren. I forget his da- Dracula's assistant is. I forget the name, but that's who it's focused on. Hmm. And he Nicolas Cage is the is the Dracula in the, in that show. I'm and it looks good. I have to see it. Well, you got to see everything that he's in. You fucking love him. I haven't seen, you know, I haven't seen so many things he's in because he makes a million movies. You love him the way politically correct people on Twitter love an overweight model on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Perhaps even more so. More so. Good one. Renfield. Yes. Thank you. Renfield. All right. The manager of an Arby's. When I see a story like this, all I think about is, dear God, let this not be an Arby's on Long Island. Oh, boy. Was it? Because I love a good Jamocha shake. And they found out that the manager of an Arby's was caught urinating in the milkshake mix. Oh, come on. This guy. Wait, this this story is like a bad onion. So they found out this guy was urinating in the milkshake mix after they were investigating him for child porn. Oh, come on. Thank God he wasn't on Long Island, but I have bad news for those people that are in Vancouver, Washington, which also what the fuck is that about? Naming a city the same thing in two different countries right near each other. That's why does that happen all the fucking time? Just be car Coover. Just yeah. We got the same thing with fucking Kansas City. Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri. What the that's fuck annoying. Is that? What is that's that? needlessly complicated? I didn't know there was a Vancouver, Washington. There's a Vancouver, no. that's this is fucking crazy behavior. And this is not the story you want to put your your town on the map. Exactly. So they're investigating for child porn, which turns out had a whole bunch on his computer. And <sighs> during this investigation, they go to find out that it was a fetish, a fetish of his to be urinating in the milkshake mix. And he had been doing so numerous times over oh. the course of his tenure as the manager at this fucking Arby's. Oh, God. Yeah. How fucked up is that? Oh, that is awful. That whole that whole story just makes me sick. That is the manager from hell. I thought about this and it, it it's disgusting. But I wonder if there's some sort of wonderful poetic justice in the fact that like if you're broken enough to be into child porn, you're mm. also broken enough to pee in the milkshake mix, which could like you're like there's more signs of you like like this guy's a fucking weirdo. We got to look in like, you know what I'm saying? We got to look into this shit and you're when it rains, like, it pours. It, it's just when one thing's wrong. Yeah, it kind of just it all falls into place. Like, yeah, yeah. Weirdo guy. Yeah, that's the guy It all right. adds up because he's a giant weirdo. Like, oh, Steve's crazy enough to pee in the milkshake mix. Let's, let's check his computer and make sure there's, you know, let's 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 delve there. into Steve's life a little bit deeper, please. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good. That's that's oh, it's fucked up. Mm-hmm. Um, Jack me off. Favorite Nick Cage movie. I got to go either what, what's the one where he pees in the Arby's milkshakes. Uh, I think that's um, it's called Vancouver. <laughs> um, and it's it's not a good movie. <laughs> um, I I like The Rock. It's always that's always a good movie. The Rock is great. Face Off is great as well. And you go a little old school with um, with Moonstruck. You know, I can always. They're all good movies. But uh, Moonstruck. What, is good. What's a bet for you? This is a bad question for Frank. Oh, what's bet? a bad Nick Cage movie. I'll give you a bad. Ask Nick Cage what your movie. favorite is. You just fucking worship the guy. What's a bad Nick Cage movie? I'll give you. I'll give you the bad Nick Cage movie. It's um, what the hell is it? Uh, the 
I forget the name of something man, the wicker man. That's a terrible movie. What is that about? Uh, it's a remake actually. It's he go he's a detective. He goes to this island to investigate a murder, but on this island it's a small island filled with like um like a tribe of women that are like a, a cult, I guess a cult of women. Mm-hmm. And they have these weird rituals and things, and he's there trying to get answers about this murder. But I mean, I don't want to spoil it. It is a shitty movie, and it's just spoil it. Nobody. It's like a shit. dozen years old. Um, it turns out that the only reason he's there is because they kind of lured him there with this fake disappearance, and just the the way it all unfolds is dumb. Snake Eyes is a good movie, yeah. Uh, the way it all unfolds is just really dumb. Like no cop would behave, would ask this line of questioning or a cop would ask this a different line of question. You know, it's just, it doesn't feel real. Mm. And then the end is just, yeah, there you go. Jack me off the bees. Anybody who's seen the movie, you know, that line, Oh, not the bees. That's bad. It's just, it's just not a good movie. But, he, you know, he has oh National Treasures, another great movie. I love that movie. I go sit down and watch that anytime. What's Jimmy the Cope one? I, I don't know if I'm confusing this with being John Malkovich. Wasn't there one where he plays like two guys and they're weirdos? Um, face off? No, not face off. Something where like he's in a swamp for a while there or something. Or maybe that's john malkovich i don't know if i'm confusing this i feel like it's him um the swamp for a while where he plays this like crazy maybe an auth oh was it adaptation it was adaptation i don't know that one i i, I don't know again there's a ton of movies of his i haven't seen because he makes one every 10 minutes yeah it was adaptation that was a weird one it could happen to you good movie oh uh, it could happen to you is one of the greatest fucking movies of all time there you go but I wouldn't so, say that's a Nick Cage movie. Talking about it's him. It's yeah, but it's Jane Fonda too, and also uh, yeah, Rosa is, Perez. Is, that's got a great cast in it. It's got a great cast, uh, but it's he's in the movie. He's he's a, the star, one of the stars. That's one of the greatest romance stories fucking ever, and nobody. I feel like nobody brings that movie. It's Classic, great, movie. great, and. And I would say top 10 New York movies, like movies where New York's a character in the film. Yeah, I agree. Maybe even top five. I agree. I like that. That's a good movie. Um, Nick Kate, Con Air. Fucking got Shaft in that movie, too. Isn't Shaft in that movie? In Isaac Hayes? In It Could Happen to You? Yeah, Isaac Hayes, I think, is the guy. It's Isn't possible. he like the narrator? I can't remember, but possibly. Like Isaac Hayes. Um, Oh, there's just a ton. There's a ton. Knowing was a good movie. Uh, underrated, I feel. Um, and there's a bunch that just came out. The the one I haven't seen it. I, I'm waiting to see it. I haven't seen it yet. The one where he plays himself. That looks hysterical. Mm. The unbearable talent of Nick Cage or something. Yeah, like that. that looks interesting. I like the meta ones. Yeah. All right, Frank. Uh, Supreme Court leak poll results. Pretty shocking here. This, according to an NBC poll, uh, it found, you know, again, the Roe v. Wade thing leaks. Everybody's wondering 70 percent of the country is for Roe v. Wade. Uh, so NBC puts a poll out there to figure out what sort of impact this is going to have on people voting in the midterms. And the result of the NBC poll is that it's going to have little effect on which party uh, could be in control when we uh, are done with the midterms here. The poll conducted days after the leak. Uh, was published in Politico shows 46% of voters want a GOP controlled Congress while 46% want Democrats in charge. Hmm. So again, split 50, 50, uh, which goes to show you that this has oh. had zero impact on how people are going to head into the midterms. Again, this is one poll. Yeah. I'm I surprised know. there's not more than more movement in this poll. Agreed. I just want to know how many people did they ask in that poll? Is it a thousand people? Is it ten thousand people? What what's the numbers here? The real number? Um, because again, the, the sample size I feel matters. Uh, going back to March, forty six percent of voters picked the GOP. Uh, so basically, the same percentage. 
47 preferred the Democrats. But of course, there's that uh, error margin of error, uh, which is three percent for this poll. So it it swung down a percentage. Mm-hmm. Again, margin of error. Uh, enthusiasm for the Democratic voters has shot up, though. 61 percent expressing a high level of interest ahead of this year's midterms an 11 point jump from March. See, that's what's interesting, even though maybe Republicans won't vote for Democrat candidates because of this. You have to wonder how many more Democrats will come out and yeah. vote because of this, which which could be an interesting swing. I agree. Um, but I thought you would have seen more people, you know, flip flopping around. Um, I'm sure the amount of people who were in the poll or is in here, but I, I can't find it. Yeah, I mean, um, again, just like uh, I guess it's Zella Hooper. Sample size does matter. That's what she said. All right. See, that's hurtful for, to all the men in the podcast. Well, to um, the people who are, don't think size matters. Um, yeah, just to, to go back a second, I have to say I can't leave out Raising Arizona. Great movie. Go ahead. Uh, among GOP primary voters, 55% believe uh, President Trump should continue to lead the GOP, but 33% think while Trump was a good president, it's time for the party to find new leaders, according to the poll. Yeah, but the ones that are showing their faces, not great. DeSantis is a is a freaking disaster. Yeah, but he's not a Trump guy. He's he's out to do his own thing. Well, that's what I'm saying. When the GOP said they wanted new faces or new, well, DeSantis is the new face. Yeah, that's you're what I'm saying. Than the new face, but that you're not a GOP well, that, voter. That's what I'm saying. They, they, I think they need new faces, but. New doesn't mean better or worse. It mean, I mean, I think he's bad, just as bad, DeSantis. I don't think he's a, an improvement. Uh, the former FDA chief, Dr. Scott Gottlieb, said that problems at the problems with the formula shortage date back many years. Uh, he noted the Michigan plant that produces a lot of the baby formula saying that these were persistent problems that appeared to have been handled poorly, certainly by the company. Um, The FDA didn't exert all the oversight that they could have of that facility. There were known problems with that facility going back many years. Findings on previous inspections reveal. I just find it weird that the whole country's formula is uh, supply is contingent on like one place. Is that do I have that right? I mean, it seems like a majority of whatever they're producing over there goes on to, you know, be a big portion of a lot of the formula. And again, this is just one problem of it. But he's saying that overall, they they hone. He was on uh, Face the Nation. They honed in a lot on this Michigan plant. But mm-hmm. I think the point is, is this whole industry has been a mess for a little while, and that's why this shortage didn't happen because of the last three months, six months, a year even. His point is this goes back years of them having to shut things down and inspections and they weren't tough enough on them to begin with. So I think there's a lot of blame to go around here, according to this uh, former FDA uh, leader. Right. Uh, Governor Pete Ricketts, Frankie C, was on one of these fucking Sunday morning crazy ass news shows. Okay, who the hell is Pete Ricketts? Pete Ricketts. He is a uh, governor of Nebraska. Okay. Governor of Nebraska. And he was asked. Want to talk a little crazy? You want to hear this clip? Uh, Sure. Let me play this for you here. At Buck 24. Tell me if you can hear this and if it's okay. About Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court appears poised to reverse that. Nebraska, your state, does not have a so-called trigger law on the books. But there was an effort, as you know, to pass one. It failed by only two votes last month. The abortion ban that you tried to pass did not include any exceptions for rape or incest. So can you clarify, do you think that the state of Nebraska should require a young girl who was raped to carry that pregnancy to term? So Nebraska is a pro-life state. I believe life begins at conception, and those are babies too. So if Roe versus Wade, which was a horrible constitutional decision, uh, gets overturned by the Supreme Court, which we're hopeful of. Here in Nebraska, we're going to take further steps to protect those preborn babies. Including in the case of rape or incest? There's still babies, too. Yes, there's still babies. 
So if Roe is overruled and overturned, uh, will you call a special session right away to ban abortion in Nebraska? Well, if we do get that uh, Roe versus Wade overturned, we will take. I will work with our Speaker of the Legislature to work on a special session and uh, do more to protect preborn babies. We'll have to wait and see what that decision is before we can take further steps, but that would certainly be my intention. Well, that's the... Uh... That's towing the GOP line, seems, these days. Am I wrong? I, I'm fucking speechless. I, I don't know. I mean, the I understand pro... I Again, I feel like most people are not for abortions. It's just that you just don't want to limit what a woman could do with their body. They have the freedom, right? I feel like most people are on that side of things to encourage people not to have abortions, all that stuff. Fine. But to just to there's something. Um, there's something mind numbing and, you know, what's that TV show? Do 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 the fucking, Twilight Zone. The tw there's something Twilight Zone. That when a person puts the, the the example to you of rape and then you go, yeah, they're babies too. I mean, how, how can you not understand that? I don't under, like I, someone needs to explain to the, to these people who think that like, this is, it's, it's, it's not, it's, 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 it's a weird thing that they, I don't know why they have this stuck in their heads that they can't get around it. Frank, this motherfucker was on, I don't even know what channel it, it, it's on CNN. I don't know what show it is. State of the Union. He's on this fucking TV show, smiling as all hell, going, they're babies too. I, yeah, of course. You know, fine. If you're going to go with that, it, life begins at inception. Yep, fine. C great. Conception. What did I say? <laughs> Inception. Life begins when you start that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio. Well, it did for me. I don't know about anybody else. But I was That's true. Blown away. You put on a Leo DiCaprio movie, chances yeah. are you're getting pregnant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but um but I was but I just can't understand I cannot understand. I mean this here's the thing. If I was pro life and you go to me. If I'm Mr. Religion, pro-life, God, you know, life begins when semen leaves the penis, okay? And you go to me, well, what about if somebody gets raped? They got to carry that rape baby and then raise them or whatever it is, or even give them up for adoption, whatever it is, they have to carry that all the way. I'd be like, oh, shit, you got me there. Yeah, I mean, it, it's over. You can't fucking, that's it. That's it. That's, it. that's not, you know, this woman's, choices are all stripped away then this even if woman... i was like fuck women and their bullshit choices even if i felt that way which i don't but if i did i would be like well i i can't get around what you just said yeah it's hard to argue um it one thing a good this is the un's crimes against humanity they have them listed and one of them you know there's a ton there's Obviously, murder, enslavement. Hang on, is Olive torture. Garden on this list? Because it feels Olive like Garden's number four. Okay, thank you. Uh, murder, enslavement, extermination, uh, torture—all these things that you would obviously assume as a crime against humanity. And hold on, where is it? It's on here. For and right here, uh, there's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. You know, and uh, as in G, rape, sexual slavery, enforced prostitution, forced pregnancy. That is a crime against humanity, according to the UN. Hmm. And it's listed on their website, the UN's website, UN. Dot, you know, that's listed as one of their crimes against humanity. And yet people should say that's OK. I just don't understand. Feel, it feels so weird that we're not just talking about it. We're not just on oppositions of an issue. We're at a point where people are on television smiling and happy and excited about the fact 
that they can restrict a woman's right to do something. I mean, forget the incest and rape thing for a second. What about what about the mom who what you know, what about the doctors who go, well, you're pregnant and I don't know if you're going to fucking survive it. Yeah, you know, this, like, this pregnancy could kill you. This pregnancy could kill you. Then what? What do we do there? They they got to fucking roll the dice. I don't understand that. You know, I really don't. I also don't understand this idea of like, you know, a lot of times, you know, babies have issues or whatever. You get that thing of like this baby's not going to last three months or whatever. They had a horrible condition or hole in the heart or whatever the fuck it is. And you hear all these great miracle stories of kids that live. And I love all that shit. I do. But I don't know if I could sit there and put my wife through pregnancy, labor, birth, knowing full well that this kid is going to have a miserable, painful experience of life. I don't know if that is necessarily better than an abortion, which we all agree is not great. I don't think that that's necessarily the better way to go. Yeah, no, it doesn't. I don't. I don't see how they could. How we can go backwards like this? I don't. I don't understand. It's been set. You know, it's been settled. It's settled. It's settled. But that was all lies. I mean, they 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 said it was settled, and mm. then they just turn around and say, "Nope, yeah, we didn't." I would love to to know. Like, there should be press conferences. For, there are press conferences for like every branch of the government, but not uh, the judicial. You know, it's like why not get them on? Uh, do have them answer about the answer for this? Correct. They just publish their opinions and their and their their uh, judgments, and that's it. And just, uh, the whole country has to has to just deal with it. It's like yeah. just get them on a stage and ask them point blank: What are your intentions here? What are you doing? And did you lie? When you said this was settled law, mm. why can't we? I don't think they'll ever get them on that because I think they'll just be like, "Oh, we changed our mind." What made you change your mind? The fact that we had a majority. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> now that I know we could do it, I changed my mind. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, you know, if that was your, you know, say it. If that was your intention the whole time, and they said it in the in the, uh, you know, when they were being interviewed. You know that's what they said, and that's what they got in. But not. But when they were saying no, this is this is settled law. They were lying. It's you know, and to have uh, Supreme Court justices lying. That's uh, how is that even allowed? How is that even a thing that we have that should a proven lie? Might as well be politicians. Uh, Wanda with a great point here. It's not going to stop abortion. It's going to stop safe abortions. True. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, while we're on the topic, Britney Spears lost her baby. Very, very sad. Yeah, uh, uh, there were questions about whether or not uh, she was actually even pregnant because of the cryptic kind of um, yeah posts. We didn't even know for sure. Well, remember in the beginning, it was a food baby. Then she was holding the dog over her stomach, and and she was posting nudie pictures of herself, supposedly from a while ago. Mm-hmm. Seems like a lot of crazy behavior, but I'm going to take her on her word. Um, yeah, no, I believe no reason to. Yeah. To, uh, you know, she says they're going to keep trying and uh, love is their strength. And it was a very nice statement that she put out. But uh, she did say, you know, it is with our deepest sadness. We have to announce that we have lost our miracle baby early in the pregnancy. This is devastating. Any time for a parent, perhaps we should have waited to announce until we were further along. However, we were overly excited to share the good news. That's me. I'm very much you're the superstitious type. Oh, big time, man. I didn't want to say I didn't want to decorate the fucking room too much. All that shit. Oh, you yeah. know, it's so stupid. It means nothing. But I well, was very much on, you that. know, that's I feel like that's one that only, I feel like that's the highest or the most followed superstition. Probably, I would imagine. Right. You. That's a good point. Yeah. Like that's I, I, I don't know if I've known anybody to be like as soon as they know. They would tell everybody that's rare. You know, there are so many, you know, don't walk under a ladder, a broken mirror, all that stuff. And everybody's like, ah, who gives a shit? Do you announce that pregnancy early? That's like the worst thing that, you know, the worst superstition to break. Yes, very true. Uh, that's been article. No, I'm what? curious to get your take uh, on this. What do you got? What is this? Here's the article. 
white fans were entertained by black athletes a day after a racist killed black people in Buffalo. This is what white supremacy looks like. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, this uh, Karan J. Phillips wrote this article today at one o'clock in the afternoon. It's obviously gone crazy viral, suggesting that after the tragedy in Buffalo, which was Saturday, there's a mass shooting in Buffalo. In case oh, yeah. you didn't know, mm-hmm. uh, white guy, uh, young 20 something, whatever. I think he was like 19 or 20, 19 or 20. Rolls into a supermarket at Buffalo, opens fire, uh, leaves a manifesto behind talking about the great uh, replacement theory, which is this idea that um, immigrants are coming into the country to replace white people in the vote and in jobs and all sorts of jazz. Uh, it's this whole crazy thing. A lot of people upset of Tucker Carlson, who's been on who can show, go, who saying, can go fuck himself, saying all this stuff. Um, and obviously this kid takes whatever that shithead says and goes crazy and fucking goes nuts. And in fact, his family came out today and blamed COVID because they were like, well, he had two years of isolation. He fucking went crazy. Uh, I don't know about that. Maybe. I can't, possibly. I can't. That's no, I don't think it really matters how we got here, but we got here. Uh, and then this guy, Karan Phillips, writes this article and he's basically saying that the fact that the NBA played uh, b- basketball on Sunday that this is what white supremacy looks like. Um, I don't see that point. I'd, 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 I guess I'd have to read the article, but from the headline, I'm sure there were more than just white fans watching the game. You know, mm-hmm. I'm sure people Good of all point. races and and ethnicities were watching the game. Um, and I don't even know if the teams are made up of major. I'm sure that I don't know what the, what the breakdown and ethnicities are on the team, but they're playing the, you know, maybe it's, I mean, of course it's, it, could they have taken a day as a day of silence? I don't know, but you know, they, they played a game that they play every, every other day or whatever it is. I don't see it. I'd have to read the article, but it doesn't seem like he has, I don't see the point yet in that. Well, what he said in the article, he says that in the bubble, um, when the NBA had black lives matter on the floor, players had social justice slogans on their uniforms. Adam silver was allowing everybody to think for a second that black people let them kneel to the police shootings, all that stuff. He basically is saying that, we had a racial awakening during the pandemic. Um, and if you remember, there was a, a lot of violence a lot of times. The NHL canceled games for a couple of things. Um, NBA, you know, all, all the leagues, they kind of they stopped playing. Ga- they, had, they had some, you know, canceled games for some of the stuff. And he's basically kind of saying that now that something like this happened and we're not canceling a game, that's white supremacy. I mean, I don't get that. Because I think if the players walked out there and they were like, we're not going to play this game, that game would have not have been played. I mean, that's how that stuff was done during the pandemic, too. It's not like the owners went in and said, hey, guys, I got a, I got an idea. Why don't we cancel today's fucking game? You yeah. know, but I guess his point is, is that when we were in a bubble and there were no ticket sales, nobody gave a shit. Now that everything is back to normal and we're this shit is happening now, everybody moves on with life. But again, the players, especially in the NBA, more so than in any other league, the players in the NBA run that fucking league. That league right. has the weakest ownership. Their their union is the strongest. Those fucking players take off every other day if they want to. There's like mandatory resting. There's all this crazy shit that hockey players, baseball players, they certainly do not have to deal with, mm. right? Um, maintenance days and all this jazz travel all the the nba players are the the, they rule you know they they fucking leave for free agency two or three of them four of them go to one team if they want fucking go there and run up the you know whatever so they have all the power in the world if they wanted to not play a fucking game they could have not played a game there's nobody that would have fucking stopped them yeah and i don't know if yeah because you have to know were they like were they told you got to play this game or else you know i I doubt that I doubt that because an excellent point, Frank. I doubt that because 
if a player was told get your ass out on that court and play this fucking game, you could be on Twitter within two minutes. Yeah, probably. Um, also, I, I it's it's sad. It, what happened is is terrible, and then it happened again. The next day, there's a what the sad fact of this country is that there are mass shootings now every like every day, every other day. And it's it's it doesn't stop. And until we get rid of the I'm a big guy that I'm a big fan of getting rid of the guns and AR fifteens and all that and putting limits and better you know, that's and the racist stuff has got to go. That that it's it's unbelievable, um, but I don't know. I, I feel like this was a cho- this was a choice of everybody involved in the game. And if they wanted to play, uh, yeah, they took they took knees and they did all this all the protesting and stuff. It's their choice to keep doing it. Um, I don't know. It, it's it's terrible because. It's then terrible, they, but I think you make a good point. We're at the point now where there's so many shootings, the whole world would stop. We would the whole world it. would stop. If we because fucking shooting for every one of these. Yeah, we wouldn't there's do any. Sh- and maybe that, maybe that's what it's going to take. Maybe everybody, everything stops until we fix this. But is that a realistic uh, thing until we, again, until we put sh- common sense gun laws in place and get rid of the AR-15s and the needless guns, the guns that don't have any purpose other than mass slaughter, like an AR-15, you don't need an AR-15 to hunt. And if you do, then you're a shitty hunter. Um, it's like, oh, I need I need my my landmines in order to trap deer. It's like, no, you don't need that. Hmm. You know, what the fuck are you doing? Well, not even the gun, too, but this fucker went in there with armor, body armor. Like, he was, this he guy, was there to do the damage. I just find this interesting, too, Frank. There was a, a guy on Twitter, Dr. Thrasher. He posted uh, yesterday. Uh, this tweet caught my eye. Uh, he said, noting that in AP copy, the Associated Press, which is basically the stand, you have AP, you have APA, you have New York Times. There's certain you know publications that have been sort of the standard of language and grammar and spelling, mm. right? I know me personally, like when I do my little consulting work and we have to title something or whatever, we will go to AP copy. We will be like, oh, the AP does it this way or the times will do it this way, whatever. So this is interesting. Uh, In AP copy, 18 year old Michael Brown was an 18 year old black man, while 18 year old Peyton Gendron, which is I think the guy who did this one, is a quote white teenager. And he put both of the stories next to each other and he highlighted the area where Michael Brown who was a black kid. These are the was, these are the victims of no 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 the Buffalo. What is who's this? No no no. Michael Brown. Uh, let me see here. Let me bring it up for everybody. I don't know why I'm not showing everybody this. Makes a lot of sense here. Can you? Oh wait, hold on. Can you see that? Uh, yeah, I see Doctor Thrasher's. Yeah, tweet. this is this is. Let me make that bigger so you can see. This is Dr. Thrasher, 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 Thrasher. So Michael Brown, as you can see here, uh, he was shot to death by a police officer. They list him in the article as an unarmed 18 year old black man. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and blah, 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 blah. The, the guy who shot up the Buffalo supermarket was written as a white teenager. Now, I don't know, again, you can have, th- like, this AP article could have came out as it was happening. And until they got more information, you know, that could have changed. So it's a little manipulative you know. Mm-hmm. There could have been a difference there. Because, excuse me, what people don't understand is when shit's coming out, breaking, it, information could be incorrect all the time. Um, but if they stuck with that, that is a bit of a you basically call it an institutional racist slipperoo of like you're referring to eight what you know, an eight year old black man versus a white teenager. teenager. You're kind of making him feel all a bit more innocent. 
Yeah, when he's a teenager, oh, he's, he could he's oh, too young to be held accountable. Kind right, of thing. right, exactly, exactly. I, so, I see. I don't know the timing of these two articles, but I did that did catch my eye. This Thrasher, and he got a lot of obviously. I don't know if you can see there, two hundred and thirty three thousand likes. So it's yeah. buzzing around the internet that that yeah, piece as well. But the Deadspin article, I mean, Deadspin is just shit. I, they just there's no more. I mean, there's never been a lot of journalistic standard in blogs mm. uh, especially the sports ones um and i'm certain that this Quran guy has his his issues and his druthers you know uh, which he's certainly welcome to but i do think it's a bit irresponsible to call the fact that people played a basketball game you yeah, know a definition of white supremacy i mean i don't i don't yeah i don't see that either i feel like also what was it uh sunday night the rangers played exactly was that was that white supremacy i don't i don't know what i don't understand like they just played the game that they were scheduled to play if they decided not to if they i don't know if they decided not to play that that's fine too life went on as normal i got a news flash for you i bet you 60 to 70 percent of this fucking country had no idea this even happened until monday a lot of people don't fucking read the news and shit on on the weekends. Maybe you know, there's there's a reason why weekend anchors exist, and you know, all that. Maybe kind of shit. I mean, it's all if you're on social media, you know about it. I feel if you're on social media, but I tend to kind of unplug unless I'm drinking heavily and want to start fights with people. That's you know, a good point. I like to do that too. Um, um, yeah, though it's it's a weird. It's I don't know where that are. It's like, that seems like a. What can I say to grab Go some views? To... Get some clicky clicks. Clickety click clacks. Uh, this is another one that Frank found too. A GOP candidate in a primary um, who is in jail at the moment for killing his cancer stricken wife. Mm-hmm. As if just a healthy wife wasn't enough. Yep. She had cancer and he murdered her. And he's in prison. He's in and prison. he won a Republican primary. And he's the winner. He. <laughs> And the judge or someone said, oh, oh, he's I'm sorry. He is in prison awaiting trial and it's it until proven guilty. So technically, he's not a convicted felon yet. Hmm. So technically, he can run. Yes. However, he is in prison charged with the murder of his cancer stricken wife. And he won uh, as I, I don't even what was a the position? Primate. Well, so it wasn't for like, you know, state senator or anything, you know, local crazy thing, I I believe. Right. Yeah. It was a uh, it was for a township board seat. Right. So So very, very small town, very small town still. And normally, yeah, this is the this is the danger of not looking into who you're voting for. If I'm sure if it said next to that person's name is currently in jail. Waiting trial for murder. Maybe I'm going to challenge you here. Okay. I'm going to challenge you here because even I'm sorry, but in a small town, when somebody murders their wife, who's the whole already town kind of knows about it, dying from cancer, that's a fucking story that's going to make its way around the way. And it's not like it happened again. It's not like it happened on a Saturday and the thing was on a Sunday. This guy has been in jail for a He's while. He's been in jail for a while. He's been, been waiting to story. Trial. Yeah. For a yeah, while. This, this is a weird one because. We know from from the past there was a an incident in a town we grew up in, and everybody knew about it. Same, you know, similar, not 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 this nefarious. It was a different kind of thing that happened in our town, and the whole town knew. Um, I do not know what the hell you're talking about. There was a killing, or murder in the in the town. And oh, the recently? Whole, you mean? No, no, a long time ago. Oh. And word of it spread. We knew, you know, everybody knew who it was and because it's it was a small town. Everybody knew who it was and what happened. So to your point, when something happens in a small town like that, catches fire, catches everybody's attention real quick. Yeah. Um, so this kind of thing, I mean, the guy is in jail and he and he was announced as the winner of this this freaking thing. Fucking crazy. What are we doing here? It's crazy. <laughs> I don't right. understand. Final story, Frankie. See, are we headed for a debaucherous summer? 
Oh, this is a good story. What do we got here? What is this? What are you talking about? Okay. People are, there's an article. I and mean, a lot of people are saying this too, that this is going to be a crazy summer. And here's why I agree with it. Again, I'm not into the sex club thing. Fortunately, it won't happen. Mm. Uh, but I do like to travel and have been looking at flights and such and hotels. Everything is like double the price that it fucking was. And I know people are going to be like, well, the gas prices and shit. But even like four months ago when I was looking at stuff, you couldn't find a hotel or an Airbnb at some of the popular spots this year, like in January. Like it was it, like people were had enough. They're going to live their lives and go on their vacations. And uh, prices for travel were up and through the roof. So here's this. This is a story in the New York uh, Post. Um, as the pandemic things loosen up, they're talking about they interviewed this 22 year old Queens girl, Kiara, and she says, and I quote, I want to go to sex parties. I want to have threesomes. I want to do all that. So is this girl dictating everybody's summer now? We're all... There's a lot of examples here. Okay. Um, but she said that she recently got into a polyamorous relationship after the last two treacherous years. What better way to blow off steam than by, uh, you know, scorn? Said another person. blowing off some guy named Steam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, a 49-year-old HR manager told the Post over a drink, we need tender, loving care. Mother Nature has been beating us up. We're getting sunshine now. And guess what happens when you get sunshine? You get horny and things happen. You also get burnt. Yeah. <laughs> this has been on display uh, at, uh, at a, a place called Madam X, billed as the quote-unquote sexiest bar in New York City. Oh, boy. The Houston Street watering hole, which offers risque private rooms and erotic games, has seen an exponential increase in kinky parties booked in recent months, according to owner Amy McCloskey. So Not it's a it's a free brothel is what you're saying. You I, just go there and just I, I don't know if it's a brothel as much as you kind of go there to be a little it's promiscuous. Just, it, it's a sex party. It's a yeah. They're not it would be probably it would be illegal if they were charging people to have sex and stuff like that. Amy said it's not just that. She said we've also seen a much younger crowd coming in than before COVID. X marked the spot for the polyamorous uh, Kiara there. Carrie, mm -hmm. whatever the fuck her, I forgot already. Uh, who was there on a recent evening playing a sexy card game with friends, which had the group discussing such titillating subjects as their first experience with cranking one out by themselves. Yeah, right. Um, that's 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 not overly abnormal. The article goes on to say, again, in the New York Post, uh, COVID has not only made people more adventurous, but also more direct. No liquid courage required. 25-year-old Joshua Wiskovich told the Post on a recent afternoon in Washington Square Park, I got asked to be friends with benefits with someone 20 minutes ago. That direct flirtation... Is pretty is he much rubbing it in. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's just bragging. What's with this guy? I guess so. I guess so. Um, this in uh, this guy said the direct flirtation is pretty much all I deal with at work. He's a restaurateur. He can he added that he is currently juggling three lucky ladies. Oh, what a dick! <laughs> On a daily <laughs> basis, stupid. there's women trying to pick me up at their table, leaving me their number, which actually happened a few times last week. After the pandemic, everyone just seems to be a lot more open and confident. The nightclub scene, which is accompanying PDA and ladies uh, shaking out of short, sexy outfits, has picked up like it was never put on hold. Patrons are again packing steamy dance floors, nose to nose and mouth to mouth, even on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Got to watch that nose to nose stuff. I get hot. Mm hmm. Uh, Jasmine Shane, 23, a pharmaceutical graduate student from Hoboken, said, I think clubbing is better than ever. Everyone is ready to live their best life. Everyone here on a Tuesday is out. I like Paul's uh, statement in the chat. There it is. <laughs> Sounds like a Maddie Cawthorn party. There you yeah, go. That's, that's what's happening. You, you can blame 
maybe he could just blame it. Oh, it's COVID, you know, time to let loose. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with it. At the recently opened Wonderland on Wednesday evening, topless pole dancers and scantily clad waitresses entertained a packed house as the crowd awaited the arrival of Migos rapper, Ops, uh, Migos rapper Offset. Even surprised guests Nicki Minaj, French Montana, and Offset's wife Cardi B let loose. All right. Well, that's a that's you know I feel like that's normal. People go, you know, the entertainers they go to clubs. That's big, you know, party scenes. They they do that. Anna Paulette, twenty seven year old from Midtown Manhattan, told the Post, "If you're going to talk about New York nightlife, I suggest S and M because that's where it's interesting." Oh boy. She added that the underground scene of sadism and masochism clubs have absolutely exploded since COVID simmered in New York City. People just want to feel something again. Paul had speculated that S&M has offered those shattered by the pandemic a way to deal with their demons, which has led to a growing number of submissive types. Hey she, she recalled a recent instance where a man told her he fancied her Matrix-style leather boots and asked if she was into the lifestyle uh, as a role of a mistress upon a positive answer he got down on his knees and said i will give you twenty dollars right now if i can lick your boot <laughs> this was new york because fancy doesn't sound like a new york phrase like i fancied my boots yeah all right well, i guess that's part of his gimmick and if you're gonna if you're gonna lick somebody's shoe don't, not not in new york no i mean Especially not the bottom of the shoe. If you're mm -hmm. looking like the, if it's up the like one of those boots that goes like up the uh, like the calf, maybe. Yeah. No. But um, not, the, not the bottom. Don't lick the bottom of anybody's shoes. Nothing. That's just that's that, just not healthy. That car was licking the shit out of Megan the Stallion's boot last night. L. A. Too. L. A. Chicago, New York. I'm trying to think of a town where licking a shoe is acceptable. I, I Toronto. don't really know. Toronto, Toronto is like the cleanest. You walk around Toronto, the streets are like, I don't know. I feel like they mop every twenty minutes in Toronto. The whole the the sidewalk, the streets. There wasn't a, a candy wrapper or anything on the ground when we were there. Yeah, that's true. I don't know, but that's yeah, twenty bucks. I don't know, man. I think this is the perfect storm. I think we're in for it. We're this is going to be the summer of fuck. And now we're heading towards you can't get abortions anymore. It's going to be a real, oh boy. it's going to be a real issue. We got another boom on our hands. Yeah, I think so. This is going to be the summer of fuck. I think people have had enough. Buy your stocks and uh, condoms and con birth control. Condoms, alcohol, weed, gummies. You oh yeah, it. all this stuff's legal now. And then all, and then yeah, it's that's a problem. Yeah, that is a yeah. problem. The only thing stopping people is that fucking gas price. If those gas prices go down, people are going to travel to go fuck and lick boots and shit. All right. Jackie O says, I'm in Toronto and downtown is dirty to me. Downtown, like where all the huge skyscrapers are, because that's where we were. And it, it seemed very clean, I thought. There's fucking four skyscrapers, first of all. And three. The only size skyscrapers. I don't know. Uh, and yeah, I was still pretty. I mean, compared to New York, it was clean. I just, it's still a city, though. I don't know if I'd be licking boots over there. No. In, in I, don't lick, I don't I'm not licking anybody's anybody's boots. That's, no. that's just, that just seems like a great way to get sick. I tell you what, I came across this spot on uh, TikTok. It's called, oh, fuck, what was it called? Rosemary Beach, Florida. Okay. Holy shit, this place looks amazing. One of the first times I'll do this sometimes. Greece gets me like this. People always do something in Greece, like on the island, like the beautiful, gorgeous water. And then yeah. I'll click on the hashtag and watch all the videos from that hashtag. Mm. And a lot of the times it turns out to be Greece. This is the first time it was Florida. It's a place called Rosemary Beach, Florida. Look this shit up. Look it up on TikTok too if you want. This looks like it looks like somebody took a beautiful European village and slapped it in the middle of Florida. It's like gorgeous. That's pearly blue water, white sand beach. European uncharacteristic of Florida. It's crazy. European architecture, hotels, resorts, all this beautiful shit, right? Waterside, all this crazy stuff. I was like, fuck, I want to go there. And it made me think of you because you deleted TikTok and all the people that are like, oh, I don't like social media. I would have never known about this place if it wasn't for TikTok. And it yeah, I got to break. 
got to bring TikTok back. But um, yeah, I, I have to check that out. Florida, you know, you see the the beaches look, you know, like normal beaches, but this seems like like a tropical kind of thing. Like hey, a, Rosemary like, Beach. Yeah. Yeah. Where is it? Is it like by Miami or it, somewhere? No, and that's why I think it's by the. It's on. Uh, what would you call it? The Panhandle, I guess. It's yeah. by. Is it like the armpit? It's in the armpit. Yeah. It's in that little curved area. Yeah. All right. And isn't that amazing to you that like you could live? I've been to Florida a trillion times. I've been on the internet forever. I've ne- how could I have never heard of this fucking place? It seems crazy to me. You know why it's it's so uh, pristine? It's because not a lot of people heard of it. Exactly. Once, once it becomes a big tourist attraction, it's going to get all messed up, and it's just going to be insane. You're going to see those residents on on uh, at Rosemary Beach on TikTok. They're like fucking TikTok ruin like. Yep. Town. <laughs> Everybody's vacationing shit. here, and uh, all those damn New Yorkers coming down. And- <laughs> now I got every fat fuck from New York <laughs> trampling their ass on my beach. Yep. Got to deal with that shit now. Leaving their Sports Illustrated magazines on the beach. Yeah. Pricks. Bastards. Yeah, so debaucherous summer. Eh, worst things, I guess. Well, what, what, what's your, what is your idea of a debaucherous? What is, what is a Frank at your age, which is, what are you, 55 now? 60? 58. 58. What is that? What does it look like to see Frank let go? What do you mean? What is, like, wh- what is that? Like, what's what's a debaucherous summer for Frank? Debo- I don't know if I've had a debaucherous summer. Have any of us had a... No, I'm like, saying none of you had. What is... What's you just like, I'm going to... This is my debaucherous summer. This is me fucking... Like, this is a great question for the comments. I would love to know in the comments, what is your idea? If like, I'm going to just say, fuck it all and live life to the fullest this summer, what are you doing? live life to the fullest i mean um vacation you go you know as a you know i don't want to go like i'm not gonna go crazy crazy i, I maybe do some some cool activities you know i don't know <laughs> even most boring like go to, go to home depot was here, you need to go to home depot or maybe make a saturday of it you know get some uh some arts and crafts maybe do some some pottery <laughs> pretty nice little saturday yeah, we had a nice little Saturday carved out. Pretty nice um, debaucherous summer. Right? I don't know. Uh, debaucherous. Uh, parties, you know, uh, barbecue, you know, parties every weekend, barbecues. I still have to work. I have to do, you know, but if I said, fuck it, I'm not going to work and just did what I, I think I, so. I, like, what's, yeah, what is that? Is that part of your, like, blowing there you up go, Robin, responsibility? Metallica tour. I'd, I'd go to some concerts. I'd, uh, if I had to blow everything off I'd go, and money wasn't an object, I'd go to go to different place, travel a lot, vacations, me and the wife, we go to all kinds of tropical places, maybe, uh, you know, Europe, a lot of European places. Yeah, I think Paul has it. Drink lots of water, self-care. That's Frank's idea of a debaucherous summer. See, that's that's got to get those me. eight glasses in every day. That is unlike me. There's water in iced tea. So you can't make iced tea without water. See that that's it. That's an answer. I would drink fucking nine of my Arizona iced teas before twelve o'clock. That, I do that, that anyway. <laughs> it's a debaucher's Monday. What do you? You want? are the biggest fucking pussy. I only feel compelled to say. Why, like, what's your answer? Not here. I would be. I would be fucking okay. I'll tell you what my answer is, man. Not be for waiting, everybody. Waiting for it. I would be shit faced every day. I would fucking follow Dave Matthews to every city. It's the answer I gave, but Metallica. only after only after fucking Robin or whoever I forget now gave it to you in the chat. It's a great, it's a great idea. I, I'm, I'm in. I'd do that. That was the first. I would be fucking hammered and high all summer. I would be on tour with Dave Matthews. I'd go to every fucking baseball stadium and eat my ass. I would have the bloodiest asshole just from fucking overeating and drinking heavily. I would be able to kill myself in the summer. You, on the other hand, might might. No, I wouldn't. Well, my goal. It depends on your goal. (laughs) My goal wouldn't be to kill myself by the end of the summer. I wouldn't want to kill myself either, but I would fucking let it all out so hard. Yeah, the death would probably be there by the time Labor Day came around. I would. I would be drunk most of the time. I'm sure. 
I would be, I'd go to Metallica. I'd follow them around. My wife and I would go traveling. We'd, we'd just not, we wouldn't stop. We'd do everything. And it would be great. I would love that. S&M clubs, sex clubs. We might hit one or two. I'm not going to say we're, it's off the table. I'm not going to lie to you. I go to one. Check it out. You know? Yeah, I don't know if I'd participate. I don't know if they'd let me. <laughs> if for no other reason than material for the show. But if they had like one of those viewing rooms where you could just be like, "All right, Tubby, you stand over here, you go watch." Uh, all so right. you're you're in the you're into the the voyeur stuff. No, I'm not. But I would kind of I do want to be in the room when some weird shit happens, just so I could be like, "Wow, you this just, is what it was like." You just defined voyeur. Yeah, but it's not like I'd be getting off on watching. That's not it. I just want to see what it's like. Just you want the information. You want to know what's going on. Yeah, that feeling of like it's more of a study than anything. Yeah, like I'd get a tattoo. I'd I don't fucking, know if I'd get a tattoo, but I, maybe I would get a tattoo. Summer of George, twenty twenty two. A wheel of cheese, George. I was eating a wheel of cheese the size of a car battery. Say <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's fine. I'm in for eating say, like a nut job. I would say um, fucking jumping out of a plane. I, I'd have to jump out of a plane. I'd I've always skydive. wanted to do that. My only thing with that, uh, I, I don't know if I have it. I used to be it because of uh, like n- the nausea. I don't know if I can handle the nausea. I'm not. A, I'm not scared of it. It's it's the being sick from it would, would probably. Be, that's the only reason I, I don't. Do would that. you do a drug? Would I do a drug? Eh, no, that's not for me. I'm not. I'm not into. That. I drink if that helps. That's a drug, I guess. Uh, I would. I would drink myself stupid. I got to tell you, I might, I might, well, let's go to Denise's comment. This is important. I just walk into Anthony saying he'd have the bloodiest <laughs> asshole. <laughs> what kind of show are we having? You nailed it. That's I just, I, I know That's I, I wouldn't turn down a fucking buffet. And I know by like week oh, two buffets. or three, I'd be like, holy shit. I just fucking. I'm hey, into, yeah, like I'm into the blood. food. Food, yeah, I'd be I'd be eating everything I could find. Um, what about a glory hall? You go to a glory hall? Hmm. Let me think about this. Let me think about this. All right. It's a tough one. I mean, you're a married man. I'm a married man. I don't think. Well, what I was gonna say was I can't cheat on my wife. So right. in my mind, I'm thinking, do I? Do we go? Or are you the? Are oh, you the creeping scumbag who watches the whole thing? No, no, no. Like that. Like, okay, here's what here's what went through in my mind. My wife goes on the other side. I go on this side. Is that our glory hole experience? Like we're What's there. The, we did it. Yeah, that's the point, then. That's not, that's, not, ex- that's not the idea, though. Yeah, I mean, I don't want a stranger to blow me at this point. <laughs> well, there you go. All right. <laughs> like, I don't need a stranger blowing me. Who um, says the strange is doing the blowing? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, to go to one of those, like, kind of seedy places and role play with my wife, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, it has to be, you know, I can't. Exactly. I, I, I think about it. Me. Yeah. But, um, see, I think if if Jay Sabs was here, she'd pick up the first homeless guy. Yeah. And have just have a, a party she won't remember. Jay Sabs would die from a venereal disease on week three. So that's... Man, but it would be legendary. That's a way to go out if you're if you're looking to just say fuck it all. What's that? I gotta ask the people in the chat. What's because if, if I'm fucking laying it down, what's that drug that people do where they ayahuasca? Is that it? The hell? You never heard of this ayahuasca? No. Supposedly. What's that pink stuff? Remember that from Sex Island? That pink powdered Pepto-Bismo. pink shit? Oh yeah, the pink shit. Yeah, yeah. Get get some of that. I would I would be fucking rolling on pink shit. Yeah, whatever that is. I'd just be hoping it helped with the bloody asshole. Yeah. Mm. Bloody asshole's inevitable. Yeah. I gotta say, I might okay. I never heard of Hiawaska until oh fuck is her name. There was a comic. She used to have the show on E. Chandler. What's her name? I don't know. Anyway. Anyway. Um they gave her like a Netflix show. She was doing like a late night thing on Netflix after she did the E show. Somebody help me out here. Chandler something. Chelsea Handler. Chandler. There you go. <laughs> Close enough. Chelsea Handler. So she does this special where she uh, she's like, oh, we're going to do ayahuasca. 
and it's this like hallucinogenic fucking thing she had to go to i don't even know some jungle in colombia some crazy ass shit and you go and you thanks robin you nailed it chelsea handler um you go and you take this drug and it fucks you up like makes you sick like they're just throwing up they so look why would you want that mis- i hated it they looked miserable but then and she did it twice i think you have to do it like two days in a row with some kind of crazy ass shit you go through all this stuff but then they say you see the most insane like it's not a drug like lsd or one of these things that you can habitually do like you literally go people plan like vacations around this shit you go and you do this drug and supposedly it it lets you access parts of your mind that you wouldn't normally be able to and people people say people say now i i just saw doctor strange in the multiverse this weekend so this could be part of it All right, here people we go say you access other parts of the of the multiverse and all this by doing kind of- a drug uh, that's that's your brain telling you that you accessed multiple parts of the well, different parts of the multiverse. Let me say this, and not not to give a spoiler alert out there. I'm not spoiling anything. If you spoil but, Doctor Strange, I will I will reach through this this screen and kill you. I won't. There's a theory in the movie, and it's been before the movie, so it's not like they came up with this. But it was it's one of the first times I've heard it that your dreams are not like subconscious in your mind contain things. This belief, this theory that your dreams are peak. Are you accessing different yes. dimensions? Of you, because it's still you, in another uh, universe. Cool. I can Think fly that, in other theory. universes. and That's interesting. Because it is. it does make a lot of sense where you go, I'm in the dream and I was at my house, but it wasn't really my house, but it felt like my house. Like that shit happens all the time. That's kind of cool. I like you know, we like I was driving my car, but it wasn't my car, but it was my car. Mind blown. Could be you accessing yourself in the multiverse. Now, if you're going to buy that and if your mind was blown there and you could take a drug that would get you there while you were conscious and awake, that doesn't pique your interest a little bit. It's not bad, but I don't know if I I mean, I could just sleep and have a dream and do that. But it ain't the same. I Again, I, I'm a father of two. You're a fucking old fogey. None of this is going to happen. But if no. we're planning out our debaucherous summer, the asshole of bleeding su- summer of asshole bleeding. Right. And you're going to eat, you know, four cheesesteaks in a day. You might as well throw the ayahuasca journey in there. That's weird to think that there's another me in another dimension dreaming of what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not I'm not flying. I'm not doing anything magical. <laughs> That I see, I see myself in other in my dreams doing crazy shit that's like impossible. Mm. If someone's dreaming of my dimension, it's kind of you know, it's there's nothing. They're disappointed. Out of this world, physically impossible about it. Yeah. You know? Somebody I don't know if they're it, disappointed, but they're no, not. They're disappointed. Uh, let me yeah. tell you, exciting Frank in the other multiverse is like I had the worst dream. I was fucking sitting at home drinking just, Arizona iced tea. I was talking to some asshole over the computer. <laughs> for two hours it was the worst dream it t- and it took forever too that's the other part uh paul man nailed it can Ant just go to burning man i would kind of do all that shit i have no interest in burning man I, that stuff piques my interest i never do it because i don't have time and all that stuff but if you would do it if me, you had to die, you'd do burning man if you're giving me a debaucherous summer a debaucherous summer to me. All right. You're going to go to fuck somebody in the s and club. All right. Whatever. That's going to last a day or two. That's not going to be great. But if you could do something that will change your. Perception Underwear. of the world. Because <laughs> that's the goal of this debaucherous summer. It's just bloody butts. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. I guess. No, I get I get what you, I guess what you listen. I'll you put say. it to you this way. Can't shrooms do the same thing? Yeah, I they can. I if it's the same sort of it is, but people or just who lick a this, toad or something. People who do this ayahuasca, they've also done sure. I'm trusting. Yeah, people I'm sure there's a difference. And they're saying that it's it's a it's an experience like no other. Now, some people do not have great experiences. Oh, of I've course. Seen, 
they, besides the, everybody pukes and throws up and feels really sick and shitty for a long time. But so people see some nasty ass dark shit that they don't want to see. So there is that possibility. But well, I there's the dimension where happening. you're a, where you're a, a jerk. I'm sure that's this dimension. <laughs> oh, well. I can handle that. <laughs> um, think of it. Let me put it to you this way. I, Frank and I can't talk about this too much. Can't release too much information here. But in, and I don't want to hear the jokes. But in our high school, we had an experience that was quite lovely. Um, that forever changed my perception on a lot of things. You know what I'm talking about? Listen, I think you were coming on to that teacher, and there was there's no blame. You know, I wouldn't mad. go. Bl- no, I'm kidding. No, I know. I know what you mean. Yeah, it was a uh, an experience. That was a wonderful experience, and it was something that, yeah, that opened our minds, and it was great. Perfectly on the up and up, everybody. This it was like a, re- we'll say it was a retreat sort of a thing. Right. And no, you know, we, I mean, everybody can make all the jokes they want, but nothing crazy happened. No, nothing ridiculous. Totally normal, but also quite lovely and yeah. wonderful, and so much so to the fact that I still think about it to this day. By the way, I, I do too have the things from yeah. that weekend yeah no i i don't i think i lost them at some point cold-hearted then. bastard yeah not but not my fault i think they got uh what happened your wife took it off to clean I'll something say, and then it, it, maybe it comes back in six years so you don't know i'll say swept away got it okay you blaming your mother on this i am not Sounds like you're throwing mom under the rug. I'm blaming Mother Nature on this. Yeah. I will say this too. I would finally give your mom what she wants and have sex with her. Because we've about been time. She's, around this for years. She's been asking. And I keep telling her mom, I'll ask. Yeah. But, you Here's know, the you thing, keep... though, in all truth, between your mother and Janine's mother, someone's getting fucked. Because I don't think you could have a debaucherous summer without not upsetting one of your close friends by banging their mom i think that's got to be part of it that's or else did you really have a debaucherous summer that's pretty standard i think for a debaucherous summer tattoo jump out of an airplane ayahuasca doesn't mean anything unless you plow your friend's mom and you tell them about it you just watch the disappointment that's just rudimentary that's that's goes without saying you didn't even have to say it right it makes perfect sense what would bang you more bang what would bother you for (laughs) The fact, the fact that I bang your mom or the fact that I bang your mom and she really enjoyed it and wanted more. Uh, and it, it made her happy. What's upset? I hate you. What's upsetting is if she goes, oh, we had sex and it wasn't that big of a deal moving on, which is what most people say. Or if she was like, there's really I can't I, I need more. Anthony. I'd be upset that she's talking to me so plainly about it. I don't <laughs> want to hear anything about that, regardless of who it is. Yeah. I don't want my mom talking to me about that at all. Um, but I guess uh, if, hey, if you made my mom happy, then that's, that's, that's just, that's just aces. <laughs> you would fucking, you're such a liar. You would hate it. All I'd right. probably hate it. We got to go. This is way too long. Yeah. I got to go to bed. Yeah. It feels like we accomplished a lot, though. I, uh, if you could name one thing, I really think you need to rethink your debaucherous summer. I don't think you're letting it like getting drunk and eating my, until my stomach explodes. That's not. That's kind of. It's good. No, I'll but jump out of a plane. Yeah, you, know, you want to jump out of a plane? You want to jump out of a plane? I'll do. I'll do the plane thing. I have bucket list stuff too. I want to do bucket list things. What's on this bucket list? I don't know if we could get into it now. I say we All save right. that. Let's do a bucket, it. whole bucket list. You know what? Maybe bucket list uh, will be our secret uh, secret show. Is that our for, secret for show? Members, we run down the bucket list. We could do that. Do a members only bucket list show. That you know, a lot of members in the chat, but there are also a lot of people in the chat that aren't members yet. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Good That's point. No problem. You can you can enjoy the show as much as you want, but there's also another option to get added stuff that we do uh, by becoming a member. In the join button down below, there's three different levels. Uh, pick the level that's good for you. But similar to asshole bleeding, there are three different levels. Yeah, I mean, there's spotting, which <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 the baseline level. That's you don't that have gets to you. So graphic. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, that's the line. I crossed the line. <laughs> don't be an asshole. We're trying to do a professional show yeah. here, guy. Don't be a bleeding asshole. Yeah, exactly. Good point. <laughs> But yeah, become a member. You get so much extra stuff, and we appreciate it. It helps us out big time. So um, if you could do that, we do secret shows. You get, uh, you know, to tell us what what, what to talk about. Like Because we, you might not realize it, but in the chat, we follow along, and people kind of, we, we, we direct, I guess, the show in different ways based on, a lot of the stuff we see in the chats, and that comes from our members most of the time. So th that helps. You get the um, uh, the icons there, the microphone icons, the that's what she said, the go ahead, Team J Sabs, Team Frankie C. Uh, maybe one day we'll get a Team Anthony. Doubtful. Doubtful. Yeah. Then we do we do shows where we bring you guys on. The members come on the show and chat with us uh, live. So that's fun. Which that'll be fun to do. Bucket list show. Get people's bucket lists. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Yeah, I would love that, which we desperately need because Frank, his bucket list, just judging on debaucherous summer list, will be shit. So he'll need all the help he can get. He'll need to steal from people. Yeah, I'm going to need some ideas. I'll come up with some good stuff. I, got, I already have some stuff that I, like, I've been thinking about for a while that I wanted to do. Mm. So there's already a list put together. Not a long list because you know, I never really sat down and thought it all out. But as they come to me, I just store them. I got to be honest with you. I am dying to know what's on this list. Okay. I'll, I'll share with you. I also would love to know what's on JSAB's list because I can't fucking imagine. What, what hasn't she done? What thing would be on her fucking bucket list? Yeah. But yeah, I've got a few things. I'm going to say this too, and I know it's going to hurt some feelings. My uncles will not be allowed on this show. I don't want to hear shit like, oh, we want to hit every fucking glory hole in, in every state of the... <laughs> I can't have it. Once but that right happens, now. the glory hole takes over 50% of the show, at least. Yeah. Consider the last glory hole show we did with them, the bucket list, their bucket list show. That's basically, I think, what it was. One and done, folks. One and done. Bless their glory hole hearts. Yes, we All love right. them. That is it for us. You don't hear the outro music because the fucking thing is broken. <laughs> Why I'm holding this shit. <laughs> fucking microphone i'll show <laughs> piece of shit who's who are we firing for this i'm so fucking angry one of your kids is fired because they you know they screwed with the with whatever you got your I, equipment in there no here's the worst part of it we will end i will take some time perhaps tomorrow i'll turn the computer on and it'll be working just fine it that will makes be sense. Back it's probably home. it's one of those IT questions of well, did you try turning it off on? Dude, I turned it off and on. I installed the new fucking driver. Did you take the cartridge out and blow in it? The fucking th I don't even know. This is the this is the most expensive. I can't even pick this up because it's fucking I can't even do it. But it's the most expensive piece of equipment I have, and that's the fucking thing that doesn't work. Try up, down, left, right, A, B, start. <laughs> <laughs> Th that always works for me. I can't fucking stand you. Here's the other thing. Thank you, Kaylin, for the four ninety nine. That will help when I take this three hundred dollar piece of equipment and slam it on the fucking floor. <laughs> That'll go towards a nice new computer. <laughs> fucking shit. All right, that's it. I was gonna say something else, but I I, I can't be. Bothered. Yeah, nobody cares. We have. To Let's say. give Kaylin and her super chat the last word. Thank you. Beautiful. Appreciate you guys all for the support. Imagine the outro music here. I could play it off my phone if you want. That'd be nice. That'd be nice if you could do that. I could do that. Uh, make sure to join, become a member uh, for all those exclusive things that Frank was just talking about. Uh, there you go. There you go. And uh, you'll love it. You'll you love it. Yeah, become a member. It's worth it. And um, we'll try not to disappoint, but we do all sorts of cool stuff. Yeah, why should you be any different from my wife? Utter disappointment is basically inevitable. That's the way to do it, baby. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jumpstart. You guys rock. Frank just held up the Jumpstart coffee. I did. Why? I know he's not on, you're not on screen. No, I don't know. Oh, you can't see the thing. No, I can't that see. Great. The computer's broken. I can't see it. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll catch you guys on the next episode. Appreciate you for watching and are listening. AnthonyOnAir.com for all the details.